All right, what is up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Golden Dice Podcast, <laughs> episode number 61. With me, I got my two usual boneheads and Brian and Flock. How are you guys tonight? Oh, I'm good. I'm doing well. I feel great. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad. But with us tonight, we have a special guest, and we have Todd from Knights of Ren. Todd, how are you tonight? Pretty good, man. That was a really clean intro. You guys, um, that was tight. Yeah. <laughs> People probably like <laughs> overestimate how much we like do background work. It's very much like we log on and it's like, all right, let's wing it. Let's get an hour and a half and then we get there. Oh. And that's that. Yeah. We used to have Google Drive like doc sheets and it, you don't have that anymore. Sometimes I just start a sentence and hope that I, I find the <laughs> end along the way. <laughs> well, Flock, that can be your new job on the podcast is for Google Docs. I'm good. You can you can write it every week. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, give you a big fat nope. So, uh, Todd, you're you're a part of Knights of Ren. Knights of Ren has you guys are the f- first one, second podcast. Was it the Chance Cube? Did they sneak in before you guys? Yeah, I I think they did. Um, I I actually didn't come one until um, Spirit of Rebellion. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, I was I was the late edition. Um, J- I I took Jay's spot when he decided to drop. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but I know they got in. They were they were in when they were first doing uh, testing, and the game was announced back at Gen Con that year. So, yeah, they they've been around a while. Yeah, and I mean, it really took off once you joined, is what I heard. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. I just show up. <laughs> cool. Um, no, but but I like Rick and Rick and myself. We've been uh, we've been friends for twenty five years. So. Um, he just, and he's one of the ones that got me into Destiny. I had been out of gaming for 15 years. So, and he got me in and he's like, hey man, you should come on and do the show with us one night. And I did, and then they kept me. That's pretty much how that went. <laughs> Same here. Worked out. <laughs> right, right on. I have a very yeah. similar story. Yeah, but I don't know. I think Todd has like a, a secret agenda against us. Um, like looking back to Nova, I really think he tried to sabotage Golden Dice uh, to not, to get us to not wake up the next day. Uh, it almost worked for one of us. And Brian almost Me? didn't hey, make it. Let me play devil's advocate, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's like, yeah, Me? Brian, have another drink. Have another drink, Brian. Yeah, we'll watch you another one. <laughs> okay. You know, it I'm, does not take much convincing for me. That rooftop bar. I mean, <laughs> I mean you guys were there, right? Like, <laughs> I was barely there. I almost didn't make it. I was very close to not making it. At least that time he actually made it to the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, uh, that's fun. Yeah, last time we saw Todd was at the rooftop bar, which is always a uh, always a good time at Nova. Nice little setup there. But um, we usually ask our guests like a few uh, different questions. Some of them have been started by Shane, who now is long gone. But I told him I'd keep his tradition alive of some of his lame yeah, questions. Yeah. But um, overall, Star Wars one. So, what is your favorite and least favorite Star Wars movie, Todd? Oh my God! Um, so, least favorite, super easy, Phantom Menace. That movie sucks balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and I don't care if it's your favorite movie or not. That movie's god awful. No awful, disagreements. Awful bad. Yep. Bad movie. Um, my my favorite would have to be Empire. I mean, I think that's kind of a staple. Um, that was the first one I actually got to see in the theater, so that was super cool. Um, cause I got to see that when I was a kid, when it came out and like that hooked me immediately. I was in, so man, you're old. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm old. <laughs> Don't harass our guest. Harassed. <laughs> um, sorry, man. I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what got you into, you said, uh, Rich was the one who got you into destiny. Was he just kind of like, here, let's try this deck out and you just kind of enjoyed the game or did you demo it anywhere or? No, like, um, well, actually, we used to play at a card shop back in the day called Total Access Games. 
um, oddly enough. Uh, <laughs> and I used to play the old Decipher CCG. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I had played that quite a while and competitively for, gosh, four or five years until I had my, my first son. And then I got out of gaming entirely. And then three years ago, a couple guys show up on my step and they're like, hey, man, we got this game you ought to check out. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's see what it is. And um, yeah, the next day I went and bought three boxes. So I've been playing it ever since. And I think that was back, that was at right after the initial launch. It was probably end of November, beginning of December after it launched. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. I think January is when I started to get into it. Almost like mm -hmm. right around when they've restocked like the Ray and Kylo starters, but before yep. Spear dropped in like March or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I was like, right. So I'm like buying singles online because there were no boxes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I got the last three boxes in Richmond. Yeah, and and then all of a sudden, all the product was gone, and I was like, oh my god, oops, sorry guys. <laughs> well, I remember then the Spirit pre-release. They like some stores handed out like three packs, and it was like we were going to like ten different stores in our area, but just because like we were used to Awakenings, there being nothing, we're like, oh, we got to get these packs because who knows how many there's going to be next time. But luckily, oh yeah, and pretty good. and Worlds that year, like it was released when we were at Worlds, and FFG would only let you buy six packs at the actual their home office. And I was like, "What the hell, man? Wow. Really six? So that was crazy. Yeah, and, and then, it was, and all of the stores, even in the Minnesota area, were capped as far as how much they would sell. Because I was going around to like all the local stores there and buying like I guess the cap was like twelve packs. I was going to like four different stores every day while I was out there buying 12 packs at each one. That's crazy. It was pretty much fixed after that. Like, I think Spirit was the last shortage. Because then they did the reprint of Awakenings, which was enough, at least for our area. And then I don't think Empire really had, like, stock issues. Like, I think there was enough. If you wanted to buy one, you could buy one. Yeah, it, it seemed like after, um, after that initial wave of Spirit, the stocking issues didn't seem to be a problem anymore they seem to have the production down okay after that at um, least but they quantity. definitely <laughs> they yeah they definitely didn't plan for how big the game was going to be initially and that i think that really hurt them coming out the gate yeah it's almost like a good thing but then long run it kind of hurts you when people are yeah. selling out in the first set yep um cool uh, on top of that so what has been your favorite uh destiny set or meta or like just time period that you've enjoyed the game uh, the most so far. Wow. Um, I, the legacy meta was pretty fun, but I also like the spirit meta. Like I, I've had fun with FN. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, as horrible as that was, like there were some real feel bad games in there, but it was also there was a lot of fun to be had in, in there as well, like with four speeds and all that stuff, and like there were so many cool tricks you could pull off there. Um, but I think legacies was probably the best rounded. Yeah. You know, uh, it's funny that you say that because Spirit probably actually has like some of my favorite memories of the game, but my group didn't play FN or Pomaz. So it was just like, yeah, you take those two decks out and it's just really just wide open. And it was, we, you know, me and my group weren't competitive then. So it really just made it for uh, a fun time. Knights of Qui Gon Ray and Baze Maz. Yeah. Uh... Qui, -Gon, Qui Gon Ray was super fun. And yeah. I actually like playing uh, the old Dooku as well, the first Dooku. Like, I thought he was super fun to play. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I remember people used to try to make him and Jabba work as a mill deck, which was always funny to see. I actually played him at Worlds the first year, too. Really? With who? Uh, it was... I can't remember exactly the lineup, but it was <laughs> Dooku. It was Dooku, Bala, and I think a First Order. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember how I had the dice arranged on that list but i mean it was a fun deck that's cool um all right and um last question uh least favorite co-host and why is it rich wow mm. <laughs> uh, i'm joking of course you don't have to answer that one. <laughs> um all right well, that's cool yeah just a few uh things as people to get to know you is i mean you've been in the community for a while but you know some people have hopped in late and left early yeah. so they might have not you know necessarily known how you got into destiny or why you enjoy it all those things um yeah, right on. But yeah so we'll dive into we had a prime uh this past weekend um alternate universe in philadelphia i mean right outside philly but we'll just say philly for the sake of bluebell um yeah bluebell um and 
Todd, you had one, not this past weekend, but the one before that, and you weren't all nights around this week to talk about it. So I'll figure, uh, you know, I know you're itching to really get the, that week out um, and talk oh, about yeah. that, how exciting it was. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was meta-defining. So what what did you run? And this was at the store champ, that minion one with his uh, three wide. Huzzah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I played Yoda Hondo double down. Mm. Yeah, I, I took I took some... Uh, it was fun, uh, and it, it actually played okay into droids, um, and it played okay into minions mill list as well, and it was playing well into the Palpatine list that I had seen here at the shop locally. Um, I found out when I got there, it doesn't play really well into Yoda Leia mill. That one sucks. <laughs> and you um, faced that the first two rounds, didn't you? I faced it round two and round three, yeah. That's so always that fun. was a... Yeah, that was two quick losses, and I was uh, I was pretty much done from there. <laughs> yeah. So, what what were the two things you double downed? Um, fickle and hired muscle. Oh, okay, so you're all in so, on the supports. Yeah. So it, the idea was to make um, if they did pay, was to get the most bang out of that dollar that they gave you. Yeah. Um. So the most effective way to get that was probably with a very effective die that you could get in and with Yoda's ability to turn dice, like you could make them effective at each turn as well. Um, and it, it played well. Um, uh, it just didn't play well into the Yoda Leia. Yeah. <laughs> Makes so. sense. Um, yeah, well, I tried that once. Right, I think it was right around Kappa cup. I was trying to play that and it almost ended up being like, I just never died. And so it was like, it ended up being a mill deck half the time. <laughs> like, yeah. I played, I don't know, maybe four games with it, and I'm pretty sure three of them, like, I milled out the opponent. And that was pretty <laughs> much it. I was just like, all right, I'm not killing you this game, so I just started milling with Yoda and eventually got there. But, man, that's a blast from the past. I, I can tell you're hanging on to uh, to Legacies with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I and I might break it out one more time, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It was fun, but and, and it did feel like it played pretty well into droids, um, the, the rounds I played. Um, and, and it's played well in the shop into droids. Um, and maybe droids gets hit and it gets better. Maybe yeah. it'll become the new, the new meta then. There you go. You were just one, you were one step ahead of everybody. That's, that's so. what I'm going with. <laughs> um, how did it go this year at Huzzah Hobbies? Cause last year, um, it was interesting in that the TO left for the top eight and they also hard capped at 64, <laughs> which I know they didn't get to that point this year, but everything go well yeah. down there. Yeah, actually, this year it seemed uh, it was a lot smoother. Um, they they actually the, they set up the same system for theirs that we're using for ours, where they had everybody sign up ahead of time through Eventbrite. Um, so there was no discrepancy as to how many people were going to be like how many seats they had left. Right. Like if you got a ticket on the presale, you were in uh, and you didn't have to wait till you got there and see if, you know, if you had if you signed up on a list and didn't prepay. You know what I mean? That's good. Yeah. Um, but but at the same time they didn't cap out either so they I think they ended up with thirty nine total, um, so it was a decent turnout, uh, um, especially for the time frame. Like I feel any I feel like any of the primes that are happening like October November December are like in a bad situation right now, um, mainly because of the you know the the pushback on the new product release and kind of the 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 hangover from worlds and and the stale meta you know um but 39 i think is still a solid showing um and and the to didn't leave this time so that was cool look at that um, it's, it, so <laughs> yeah it seems like everything went okay this year yeah that's good hey i still got to to this past weekend i got to to the finals <laughs> he had to leave uh for something for the for I think it was just game two of the fire game two and three of the finals, I think it was. So I got to TO at the end of that. So I always get to TO at the end of the day. So it's it's you know, great time. Good thing I lose. So um but yeah, that's well, cool. they just bring you yeah, they just bring you in for the important match though, man. Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> you got that. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Um that's cool. Uh glad to hear it went well and that's awesome that uh Minion got back to back Hazah Hobby wins with Mill both times as well, which is a cool thing to see for him. Um, but yeah, I haven't been to Virginia one yet. As you mentioned, like I was 
thinking about going to that one, but yeah, I mean, post worlds and we've had one every weekend since it started. I'm pretty sure without a break, we yeah. might've had a break the first weekend of November. I don't remember. It but was week it was... after worlds. Or no, no, no. We no, had that was Kappa. Kappa. I think it was a week so after Kappa. After that. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, crazy. The first weekend of November, we had a break, but then the ninth was Huzzah. And then the 16th was alternate universe. And this weekend, if we really wanted to, we could go up to, uh, is it Connecticut flocked in or is it? Uh, uh, Massachusetts. Isn't it? That's, yeah. that's where I'm going. The mass one. Wow. So you really could push yeah. it if you wanted, but obviously like there's no reason to drive four hours for a prime when uh, I think December 14th, there's one in Virginia that we're planning on going to. Yeah. That's That one's probably the farthest away from you guys or the second farthest. Yeah. That's the one in Hampton. Yeah. The, wow. The, what makes it enticing though is that the rules reference hopefully is out by then and it could gotcha. be a new meta. So I, if it's not out by then, I think I would skip. Um, but if it is out, I'd be more in t- inclined to go. Yeah, you're going to be on Yoda Hondo, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what else would I run? <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and then we had one uh, a prime this past. We had what was it 23 people at Alternate Universe? Yes. Um, so it was solid. Um, I ran Vader Greedo, made top eight, and then lost one two to uh, Manton. Uh, Cody from ABG, and he ended up making it to the finals, but losing to Yoda Bale, which was super spicy to see that win. Uh, Those are some great games. Yeah, Joe played that. Uh, Joe Quitek is a really good player uh, from New Jersey. He just can never make major events. Um, and he's topped, I think, every prime except for Tamako that he's played it, and he did New Jersey as well, and he did Kappa. So I think three for four he's topped. So he's done a good job, and on different lists. He did Ewoks at Kappa, and then I think New Jersey, he was Raylo. Um, yeah, it's the Ewok deck that destroyed me. I'm still, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> still, still salty flashbacks. about that. 19 damage turn one, I was like, oh my god, I still get flashbacks. Yeah, it's okay. It's right. you, you and Brian uh, can comfort each other in the corner about Ewoks. Yep. Oh. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, he like beat everything to get, you know, it's a shield deck, but he beat Raylo in top eight. Um, he's like a, a Big little essentially deck, um, and he beat Hondroids in top four, and then you know he beat a Delphis deck in in the finals. So it was it was super crazy game. He won on like a become one to deal seven to kill whoever was left. It was pretty crazy to play. Um, but yeah, it's just an admiral reset deck. Um, what you would think, and Yoda being able to take four shields each time is pretty uh, pretty punishing. Like Han would pump six into him, and then he would just take four more shields, and it's like he did nothing. So. That was cool. Uh, congrats to Joe for that win. That was awesome. Uh, Flock and Brian, how did you? How did your day go? What'd you uh, guys run? So, so I, uh, I made the brilliant decision to run a deck I've I've used like once, um, and I, so I brought Raylo, and I think Raylo is pretty straightforward. Very low floor, very high ceiling. Um, roll out, get the twos, do all the shield shenanigans, and you know. Do what you can. But I think the problem with that deck is, for me personally, it's so goddamn boring. <laughs> like, it's such a boring deck. Like, there's no there's no spice in it. There's no, like, pizzazz. I don't know. It's just very straightforward. I like I like gimmicks a whole lot. Um, uh, but I'm not, I'm not making excuses for how bad I sucked that day. I, I went 2-3 and three on the day. Um, I played a Ray Lemire in the first... Uh, I played after second. Both of those are losses. Uh, I then played Maul and squeaked that one out. Played a Phasma Messenger, squeaked that one out. And then the last one was uh, <laughs> from uh, a- uh, Andrew from ABG. Um, and uh, another Maul. We kind of had a friendly game. We were uh, kind of joking the whole time, but I lost that one too. So two and three on the day. I played Pokemon the rest of the day <laughs> and I, uh, at four o'clock and we left at what nine nine thirty so long day uh for me personally but block how'd you do um so i bubbled at nine ninth uh went GDP. three two yeah GDP. got that ninth got that ninth place spice uh i played a uh shockingly surprising new deck uh, it consisted with django have you ever heard of django <laughs> um I had django messenger grievous um I'm still Spicy. liking it. Uh, my, my two losses were to two people that made Top Cut, so I mean, I can't be too upset about it. It was Hondroids, which is like, I, it's kind of a 
not fun matchup for it. And then also Vader, who just did Vader things. So overall, I still kind of like the deck. I still think it's a good deck to possibly make it to the top, but I just played, I made some misplays and uh, didn't really see Delphis. I think I Delphis like once out of all five games. So that was kind of upsetting. I had to actually pay for Fist a few times. But that's, you know, something's broken when you're upset that you have to pay for something. Like, yeah, seriously. I was mad. I'm like, I had to pay for a five for a fist. I was like so upset about it. But I'm like, wait a minute. It's so good. But why am I complaining about paying for it? I don't know. So that's on my day one. Side note, it wasn't me. It wasn't the Vader player. It's not oh, me. yeah. It's not it was me. Yeah. Edgy Sith Lord. Discard to reroll. Stansy. Good guy. Nate. Well, actually, I, I, I scooped him. I, I, I didn't actually lose. I scooped him. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't I'm lose kidding, any no. of my he games beat my that butt. day. He beat my butt. <laughs> yeah, I didn't lose the Cody in top cut. I just scooped to him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Nice, there you nice, go. Good guy, Jack. Good guy, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I've never actually lost a game of Destiny. I just scoop consistently. <laughs> yeah, Origins. Yeah. Yeah, I scooped to you. Definitely. I'm going to steal that. That's what I'm doing from here out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right, how do you guys feel? Uh, we're a month and a half into primes we have had like 40 something primes i think is what we're at uh going off i rebels uh meta reports there she's been keeping track of that uh amanda's doing a, a great job uh 41 is what we had um so how do you guys feel like primes have shaped out do you feel like they've been good do you feel like i mean i know flock and brian are a little tired uh of the the meta and it kind of feels closed, but it kind of feels open at the same time, so it's a little weird. But how do you feel like overall just the prime season has been going, just even just looking at the events? Have they been fruitful or have they been awful? I mean, I've kind of I've kind of enjoyed it. I mean, um, even though, yeah, I mean, it's you're facing like Delphist and dealing with Palp and dealing with the mill and the droids. I still feel like it's fun because I feel like you can still bring like not one of those decks and still possibly do well, you know? Like, as we saw, like, Yoda Bale just made it in. It's a good deck and everything, but it wasn't topping at, at all other other primes, you know? And then someone shows up and they win with it. So, I mean, I still think there's a... You, and I also see a lot of people, like, not playing, because what? Didn't Was there, like, no four loms at the at the last one? Yeah, I don't... It's like, no one playing four lom, or maybe one person was playing four lom. So, yeah. like, people, I guess, are just kind of also getting bored of playing those decks and just showing up with some different stuff. Like, I know this weekend I'm going... I'm showing up with something completely new. Like, I've never played... Are you going? Or Massachusetts? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going. How far is that an, for you? An hour and a half. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So, I, I feel like I'm going to break something like just completely off the wall, kind of. Maybe I might break out my all I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah. I kind of like it. Having fun. I'm holding my breath for a rules reference. <laughs> <laughs> like, bated breath. Please let this meta die. I hate it. Yeah, I think that's like the only pro like this is what we've been asking for for years with Destiny is consistent events and things for people to go play in. And I think now we have it. The problem is we've got a product delay <laughs> and we're in a in a kind of stale meta. Um, and we've had like three majors that happened in the same meta as well. So like if we had product anywhere in that ballpark, anywhere throughout that to break it up a little bit. The game, the game would be in a great place right now. Like everybody would be talking about how good the game is doing right now. Um, so I think that kind of overshadows it. But the fact that we have all of these events going on right now, I think it's really good. And, and I think that we're, the fact that we're seeing shops, you know, anywhere from twenty to thirty to some forty and higher, show up at these things weekly, is really good. Um, and luckily here in Virginia, as what we did, like the four shops that are running the, the primes here, we actually split them out one a month uh, to just kind of space it a little bit more. Um, and I, I think that was more out of convenience um, than trying to stack them all in a small, confined period of time. Um, so I'm actually a little jealous you guys got one to go to every week. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm glad we didn't put all of ours on top of each other and then it, the season would be done for us. I prefer the yeah. I prefer what you guys have. Well, I, mean, uh, it, I need a we'll lot to travel. Well, yeah, I mean that's what it's. It is nice to keep playing, but then for us to have one once a month, like we'd be traveling. Like for us to play in January, February, March, we're gonna have to drive a few hours down to Virginia. Yeah, like there's not really well, but, an option. There's just Maryland is the only one. 
But so, also, okay. the way this is now is that across this prime season, right, we don't get to have that second half where it's like the rules reference is out, covert missions is hopefully out by the time that some of these primes are happening. So, like, ours is all the same meta. I would much rather have yep. different events across a different meta yep. than just slam six and a half, uh, I don't know, you know, events in the first couple months of what we're doing. I, I don't know. I just didn't like how this shaked out. I shook out. I, I would I would much rather it not be so front loaded. Well, like also, I don't, I don't think they had like uh, they weren't expecting covert missions to be delayed because right now it should have been out. True, you yeah. know. So yeah. I don't think anyone was really expecting the meta to be stale like this and having a delay. Or if they did, they just didn't say anything. I don't know. I mean, but... It's FFG. We should yeah. know by now. <laughs> we haven't learned this lesson yet. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so that was kind of the reason why I got mine in January was because I didn't put in my dates with the first announcement that they when they asked for them. I held off till the very latest moment before I put my dates in. Um, and, and that's why I got mine in January was because I, I was like, I want to know, I want, like I was talking to my rep from Alliance and I was like, I'd like to know if you guys have an idea of when the next set's going to come out. Um, and, and they obviously they didn't have any information. Um, and then maybe a week or two later, they, they announced that it was going to be delayed until quarter one. And I was I'm again <laughs> back on the phone with my rep. Hey, what does this mean? What part of, what part of quarter one? Um, and, and so that's how we ended up in January was we, we had a, a good feeling that hopefully that set would be coming out in that time frame. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I think your point rings true, right? If covert missions dropped, uh, around worlds, like when we were originally expecting it to, right. There was even conversations mm-hmm. a while back of is covert missions going to be legal for worlds. Right. Um, and like now we're at the point where it's coming in January, but yeah, right now it's like, even if CM was out and we were still jam packed, like I think everybody would be having a blast. Like you said, like playing with these new cards, having a new meta. Um, and it's like, sure, there's one every week, but you know, people are still inclined to go to them cause it feels fresh and there's still stuff to discover. But, um, I mean, we've been playing on this meta since what did it come out in June, July, July, July. Yeah. July um, yeah. And like you said, well, three I mean, majors on this and sure there's been a rules reference update that, you know, changed some stuff, you know, it, um, really pushed Ewoks out and made it not so everybody's going to be running Satine droids at Worlds. It made it open. Like, this meta does feel open um, and that there's a lot of viable decks. I mean, even looking at the the meta reports, it's so far of the 41, droids of 115, Delve 17, um, and then there's 6 Palp, and then the rest, there's 13 others. Like, 13 random decks have won, uh, which is pretty cool. Like, OBR2... Uh, some mill decks, a Vader Greedo one, Yoda Bale one, um, Ewoks one too. So Iden Beckett one. So like, like you mentioned, um, you can show up with anything, but it's just like we've been playing on this for like six months. It feels like <laughs> like it, it's just been a long time. I'm just ready for a change. Well, yeah, and it, and it's gonna be about six months. Like that's what it's gonna be by the time it's all done. And yeah. and, and that's rough. But I mean, at the same time, like. Hopefully we get a, a, a rules reference update here uh, to at least break up this last month, month and a half ish time frame. Like that would be super cool. Um, hint, hint. Like let's get that done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fact that it's waited so long. It's like if it comes out in December, it's like oh, we'll have it for like two primes, and then January will be here because there's no primes over Christmas. There's like that two week period of Christmas they don't have anything. So yep. then it's like. Okay, all right, and now CM's here, and these rule references don't really matter because the new power level cards are going to come in and be good anyways. Piloting's going to be everywhere. But I don't know. I would have hoped they would have had that out, like, by now or early November. Maybe that's, like, wishful thinking and really quick off the heel of Worlds, but it almost feels like it's, like, a little too late because so much has passed already, but that could also just be my feeling because we've had four or five primes or whatever it was. But, I'm just ready for change. Um, oh yeah, I think yeah. every I think everybody's ready for change. Like, yeah. I, I think everybody's trying to find some format to play in the meantime, just to not get bored. Right. Yep. I've been making decks at uh, at, at, at my desk. Just just <laughs> all kinds of random garbage jank. That's um, nothing new though. That's <laughs> 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 so funny. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. 
That is funny, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think primes have been like, like you said, Todd, as well. I think if like each week, if we can get primes pulling 30, 40 people, like I still think that's healthy for the game. Even if it's not like what we have expected from previous years of like, you know, primes were 60 to 80 people, some of the larger ones. So I'm okay with the numbers down. And I think that's a combination of everything we've mentioned of timing of product and just like overall, like load management, I guess you could say. So I'm not overly concerned. I think it's fine. And hopefully this rule reference comes in a, in a week or two. And then we actually get to play on it before covert drops. But, um, one thing I want to talk about, or unless you guys have any other thoughts on primes that you would like to mention. I'm no. good. Cool. Um, all right, so I want to talk a little bit about like local scenes, what that kind of uh, can look like to manage. Uh, Flock, I know when you moved up to New York, you kind of settled into one. And Todd, I don't remember if we said it in the beginning of the cast or if we said it as we were talking beforehand, um, but you just mentioned that you're pulling like 20 people uh, a week on a local, which is seems to me well above the average for Destiny. Um, some of the healthiest scenes, I would think, pull 12 people around, uh, and you're getting 20, which is awesome. Um, so I don't know if you want to like dive in and like how how did your what, we have. what that's ten times what we have uh yeah <laughs> yeah um I don't know if you want to mention like how you got started in uh in building up your local scene like did you know what were the numbers that you started out with what were some like key events that you felt like really pulled people in and like one of the hardest things I think we've had is we were getting the players out who played the game either a few people sold out, but we just never were really bringing in like new faces. Like that was kind of our biggest struggle. So I don't know if you want to talk about how you got started in your local scene and what you kind of did to help it grow to 20 people. Um, man. So like our, our local scene when we first started was probably about 10 to 12. Um, and we had two shops locally that we could play at on, on a given at, at on different nights of the week, like Tuesday nights, we were at one shop. And then like every other Saturday we would play at another shop. They would let us have space for a tournament there. Um, and the guys at one eye Jacks, the shop in Richmond, um, they actually started a league, um, which actually kept people interested in playing, even in, even in times where the product shortage was going on and all that kind of stuff. The league helped keep people involved. There was like packs given out weekly. There was prizes at the end of it. Um, and they did it across a couple different shops and you could do it wherever you played your games. So it didn't have to take place just in the shop. Um, and what ended up happening was the final of that first league was run at the other location. And they just didn't give a shit, man. Like they, they didn't care. Like and for whatever reason, they just kind of like scooped it on the game and were like, yeah, whatever, there's a table there, just grab it and go. Um, and, and I was really offset by that. Like, I just, I just thought that was a really poor way to run an event. Uh, One-Eyed Jacks was always amazing with us. The other shop, not so much. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? Hey guys, let's just run it at my house. <laughs> um, so I started inviting people up to my house on Friday nights. Uh, and we started with, like, four guys show up one week. The next week we have, like, eight guys show up. Um, then we're starting to run tournaments out of the house on Friday night. Uh, we even ran a cash tourney out of the house one week and we drew like 16 at my house. And, uh, my girlfriend's like, y'all need to get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, at that point we had another business that we had a, a retail location for. So at that point we decided to, um, to go ahead and, um, like combine a game shop and like an antique store into one. So we used the front section for the game store, the antiques in the back, and we just started from there, man. Um, and we, we've always kept it on Friday night. So we've always given the guys a consistent place to be every Friday. If you want to play Destiny, we're going to be there. Um, you know. And then once we moved to this location, we, we, you know, we picked up Friday Night Magic because we had a larger location here. Um, and the guys were like, man, I don't know if you're going to be able to keep it on Friday night. Like, you might have to move some stuff around. And I'm like, nope. I started with you guys. I'm sticking with you guys. Like, this is what we're doing. You guys will always have a spot here on Friday night. Um, and, and my community, the group of guys, like the core group of guys that we started with, um, I probably still have 75% of those guys. 
Um, so the guys that started three years ago are still playing, uh, at least a good chunk of them. Um, and my community, my local guys are really good. I, I like, I couldn't ask for a better community. Like out of all the gaming that I've done in the past, like these guys have always, these guys still stand out to me as probably the best core group of guys that I've ever hung out with and played with. Uh, and, and I think they're the reason why the community grows so much because they're willing to put in their time with new players. Um, I give them the place to play and I say, Hey, what do we want to do? Um, so I, I leave it up to letting them help decide what's going to keep them interested. And then we adapt and change and run our events based on that. So, so yeah. And we've, we've grown, we've had on a Friday night, we've had as many as 32 people playing destiny. Oh. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, on average, we pull somewhere between 14 to 20. Um, we've had a little bit of a lull here the past, like, I'd say probably about the past month and a half since after Worlds. Because um, I took, when, when we went to Worlds, we took, I think, eight or ten of us to Worlds. Oh, wow. So, and and we have, so that eight or ten guys was like, look, man, it was really cool to go to Worlds. I'm a little hungover, and I got a family. So, so I'm going to have to take a week or two off, which is completely understandable. Um, so, I mean, we've had a little bit of lull the past like month or so. Um, and I think some of that's due to staleness. Some of it's due to uh, the trip and family obligations and stuff like that. Uh, but this past week, I think we had 16. Um, and, and that's in the middle of this, this lull, this product lull. Yeah, that's crazy. You should uh, move your store and all of the people up to New Jersey. Be yeah, really. really, good, really I, I've been told I should move it to nor, uh, North Carolina, Northern Virginia. Uh, if I if I could open satellites, that'd be awesome. Yeah, but do you know what New Jersey has that those places don't have? Um, guys who pump your gas. Big true. That, and I, but I was gonna say high taxes. So uh, you should definitely come, New Jersey. <laughs> high tax. That sounds like high awesome. Taxes. <laughs> Man, I feel like I'm missing out now. You really are. You really are. You don't want to sure. give more of your money to the government. Man, they get enough. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to hide. <laughs> man, that, that that is crazy though. Like, I know when I first started, the store that we would go to, some of our big nights, we would get 20 people, right, fresh off a, um, like a new set, or if there was like a an event coming up, people coming to practice, and it was just like, it was crazy. It really was like one of the worst spots to play. It was like in the basement, and it was just like so like wet and like soggy down there and like musky yep. um but i mean it was just awesome coming and just playing games and we've just had some people got tired of traveling i think um so we lost them and i know a few people sold, sold out of the game because they found like another game that they were enjoying more so we actually <laughs> lost like a lot of our core original people who had done that and once they sold out the people that they were close friends with kind of stopped playing too um like out of that group Originally, like, I mean, Brian, you, you had kind of come in towards the tail end of, like, when that started to, uh, like, die out a little bit of the largest events. But from that, it's, like, really, like, me and Scott are, like, the only ones that still play. And Elvis was probably there um, as well. But, like, thinking Tommy w would go, Shane would go, uh, their one friend John, and I know they used to get, uh, I don't know, five or six other people that I had met through the course of it. And all of them just kind of, like, went to the wayside for one reason or the other. And eventually we looked around and it was me, Brian and Scott at locals. <laughs> and that was, that was that Jack. Uh, yeah. My house, my basement. Hey man, that's yeah. a good time. Todd kept alive doing that, but that was, hey, one, man. I was going to ask about that too. Like we, well, you, you did a cash tournament you mentioned once, but when you were having people over, was it just like, Hey, here's a tournament. Nothing's at stake. Let's kind of play. Or was it like people were getting packs or did you somehow get a connection to have like a prize kit or something to give away or, what kind of what you're doing there? Um, huh. Wonder. No comment. <laughs> no <laughs> comment. Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. No, no. Like, I mean, we we did some packs and some other stuff. Um, but the, I think the big draw. I mean, most of most of the guys that play the core group of those guys that were there, um, were of the age to. A, enjoy an adult beverage and i was like hey you know what man <laughs> come over to the house we'll get some beer we'll play some cards we'll have a good time like the, and and that's what we did like i mean it was more like a like, hey let's come hang out and just 
play cards as kind of a side thing. And it started to evolve from there. Um, I, so much so, like, here, I'll tell you this. This will, this will give you an idea. Um, so we that's what we did every Friday night was drink beer, play cards. So when I finally opened the new shop, the, the first store that we had, um, the first tournament I had there was a sealed box tournament. Um, and I had 36 people show up for the sealed box tournament. One of my guys that used to come to my house shows up at the shop with a six pack, sits down and starts playing his game one. I didn't even notice this until they were into game one and I'm taking photos of the people playing. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm like, Courtney, is that dude got a beer? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. So we're like, dude, you got, you got to put that away. Like we ain't got an ABC license. That's, that's not going to fly. So but yeah, so that I mean, that's kind of the that was kind of the crowd that we were we were playing with, man. And that's I don't know. Come on, man, just like have a good time, have a drink, right? So, but yeah, I was like, yeah, you're gonna have to put that away, brother. So. <laughs> <laughs> just got to brown bag it. That's all I got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's a mug, man. Don't tell nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, though. Then, so, what are some things that uh, that you feel like you did that got new players into the game? Like, I know you mentioned a lot of that core group was really great. You know, new players coming out. They were putting time in to teach them and stuff. Uh, but was there any, like, one event that you really felt like got new players into the game? Or was it just people, like, would walk into the shop and you'd be like, hey, uh, you know, check this out. Here's a demo game type thing. Or, you know, just kind of how were you able to draw in new players? So I'm still drawing them in, man. I, I have, I've had three new people start in the past week and a half. Um, and... and Part of it is now at this location that people see it. Like, there's probably somebody throwing Destiny cards around every day here. Um, and, and I've got a cabinet with a bunch of Destiny singles up in the cabinet. And people are like, what's this? <laughs> like, it's in front of people's face. They, they're going to ask. Yeah. Um, so, like, I've got singles out. So people are always, like, right beside the Magic singles. Like, here's my Magic singles. Here's my Destiny singles. Like, here's my Argent stuff. Like, it's all right there together. Um and, and there, that draws a lot of questions just in, in and of itself, or they see the people in here playing. Um, the events that we use, we, when we first started, what I did was I made a couple of um, like thematic decks in the shop, and I used them as demo decks instead of using um, instead of using like the, the starter decks. The starter decks are crap. They're hard to play, and they give you limited mechanics in the game. They don't really show you anything, and they're not really like a super thematic pair that somebody's going to be like, "Oh, I want to play that." Uh, so what I what I ended up doing was I put together a um, Han and Leia deck from like Awakenings back in the day, and I put together like a set of four stormtroopers, and I kind of put a little bit of everything in there. So there was like redeploy weapons. There were some ambush actions. You know, there was a, a little bit of everything. Um, so people could see some of the different mechanics and stuff and how the game is designed to work. And um, those did so well, like, just for introductory decks that we had people actually come in and be like, hey, can I buy that deck from you? <laughs> um, and so I ended up having to go back through all my old singles and put together, like, multiple Han, Leia, and Stormtrooper decks just to sell to people. Um, in fact, m one of my... Uh, I have a family that plays. I think uh, there there's seven or seven year old beat one of you guys at Nova last year. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, I heard you got your first win. Yeah, I beat that guy. I'm like, I'm like yeah, he did. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I probed yeah, that... you to make sure you had no cards, and then I did max yeah, damage and killed you. Me. I had four <laughs> mitigation cards in my hand. She probed me twice, got all of them, and she goes, "Now you can't stop me from doing 15 damage." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right. I can't." <laughs> And then flock bought that a beer. I started drinking, yeah. And then I started drinking. Yep. 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 That's that's her. That's Lennon. Yeah. So, but her her entire family plays, and, and they were brought in by the Han Leia and the uh, Stormtrooper deck. So it was you know Han Leia facing off against the Empire. Um, and and I've been able to carry those people over, and you know, and they've been. You know, advocates for the game. They've been they've been helping me promote the game, and it's like I've got my guys and me that are in here playing. I've got families that are playing. I've got kids that are playing it. Um, but as as far as like events that we used, um, I think the best one I did as I, I came up with this idea called a I called it a master Padawan tournament. 
Uh, and what I ended up doing was any of our veteran players, quote unquote, uh, masters, right? Guys who'd been playing for a while. I teamed them up with someone who was a new player. Um, and we did it randomly. So there was no like, you get to pick who you wanted to. So everybody was randomly paired up. Uh, and then we ran a draft. Uh, and so the the master would help the Padawan draft their deck and explain to them why they were picking the cards and whatever else. And then they would help them build the deck. And then they would actually coach them through the first two games of the tournament. And then the third game, the uh, Padawans were kind of turned loose to fin- figure out who was actually going to end up on top. And, uh, and then we gave prizes to the team, both the master and the Padawan that won and prizes on down the list. I, I think that was probably the most successful one we had for, for a new player experience. We had people that just walked in off the street and were like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I'll sit <laughs> in. I'll try it. Like, <laughs> which was kind of cool. Um, and then we, we also, we do the sealed box tournaments. Uh, and our sealed box tournaments, I think the smallest one we had had 28 players. And I think the largest one we had had like about 40. Um, and we, we wow. do those every release. Yeah, we just did that for the first time um, this past that, right? That was our first time. Brian, you were there. Yeah. I think I, that was our first time. That was one. our first time, right? Flock, you didn't go. I think you were already up in New York, right? Wait, do what? The sealed box where you open a box, build a deck from it. No, I was, was there. a great time. Oh, you were oh, there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what did you run? It was in the back thing. I, I, I played like the – oh, not the la- – oh, from Sp- Spark of Hope? Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't. I did it with the Convergence, I think. Oh, we did it with Convergence? I don't remember. Yeah, I think did so. We? I don't know. All I know is what, what are the what are the new Jedi that like, specials like remove a die, deal damage. Jedi Sentinel, I think. Yeah, what, whatever he's from. Whatever we, he that's the last one I did. No, I don't remember. Yeah, that was conversions, I think. Yeah, I, whatever. It is, I like it because Tommy showed up to that one. Yeah, well, that was. I mean, that was like the last event where we really were able to get. I know we did like a standard weekend event. Um, but yeah, those those seal box tournaments are a blast. Like that is is one of the more fun. Um, yeah. like I feel like our group has had playing the game simply because like we said, a lot of people were kind of getting in and out of the game. They couldn't really come to standard nights and, or even theme nights and really just build decks. Like it was a lot for them, but being able to just buy a box, sit down and, you know, play a tournament right there was, was really good for us. Uh, I, I can't, that's gotta be awesome with 40 people. And, and you, you were doing like a box for the winner, right? Depending on how many people showed up. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then pretty much once it gets over uh, 24 players, we add another box into the prize pool for every 10 over that. Uh, and then we split them up going down. Nice. So, and, and we, we gave away some other stuff. Like we gave away some like Knights of Ren play mats and uh, dice trays and some other stuff. So um, we, we, we try and keep it. We, we want to make it fun we also like we want it to be competitive but we want it to be fun we want it to be a community building event um the other thing that we do that i I don't know if i I don't think other shops have players like like i play the game like so that's that's kind of another thing so like when i go to worlds or packs or any of these events and scrub out um i take all my prizes and bring them back to the shop and then i give them away I use those for tournament support and prize support and other things, especially when we can't get OP <laughs> kits. Um, that's kind of a big deal. So, like, all the monochromatics that we brought back from Worlds, we gave out, like, 10 of them that Friday after we got back. That's awesome. Um, so, and, and we've done the same thing. And, like, we'll run spot gloss tournaments here from, like, when we go to PAX or something like that and pick up some spot glosses. We bring them back here for, um, for, for prize support for monthly tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah, rest, rest in peace, packs. But uh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, is Scott here? Is Scott here? This guy, yeah, Scott. We're gonna bring Scott in real quick. Going to rant about that. Hey, we're gonna phone a friend real quick for the for the rant. Yeah, we phone could, a friend. We could we could talk about packs and OP in a little bit, um, because we could go off on a tangent, or at least I feel like I could for packs. Um, and I'm sure Todd could for uh for OP and kits. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, that's all yeah i like hearing those events i think those are, are really cool um at building uh, a community as you mentioned and i despite us being a smaller community i noticed that bearing fruit uh for our group as well um but Todd, i guess my question would be um 
if somebody didn't have a local scene, right, they had maybe a handful of people in the area that they kind of thought were interested <laughs> in Destiny. Uh, if South Jersey was looking, um, Brian is going to head up our South Jersey local scene, and he's going to he's going to run it. Uh, what what advice would you give Brian? Be like, hey, you're starting up new. What would you would you recommend somebody trying to start something like at your house where it'd be, um, you know. Every Friday we're we're going out or we could go to a brewery or do something. Or would you try to have somebody just immediately try to work through a store and be like, hey, can we get a night a week and, and you can order these kits and things like that and we'll order product through you? Or kind of what would your recommendation be if somebody was trying to start up a uh, a local scene? I, I would start it – if I had to do it over again, I would do it the exact same way. I would start it at my house. Yeah. Um, and, and I would – bring players from other games uh, that, that I know that I could probably get interested into it who just haven't been exposed to it. Right. And then like, so it, it sounds kind of dirty. You got them in a captive environment. You're like, Hey dude, come here to my house. Let's have some drinks, play a couple games. Here's some destiny. Take it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and have some friends come over and, and play some games. Um, I, I think the main thing about that, like, and, and I get this from you guys already is the main thing about this is to have fun with it. Like when you're trying to build a scene, like the last thing you want to do is, is try and cram meta down somebody's throat or, or competitiveness down their throat. Like you want to just be able to have some fun um, and, and play like maybe fun thematic pairings or some off the wall, crazy stuff. Um, have a couple drinks and just have a good time. Make it a fun time. Um, and when you have, and then once you have a group that you have together, um, then I think that's when you take it to a shop and be like, hey, look, man, I've got a play group of six to eight players. We've been getting together on X day. Um, we'd really like a shop that we could play at. And when, and when you can come to a shop uh, and say that, hey, I can bring eight to ten people over here and play or six to eight or whatever the number might be. Uh, and, and we would be putting money into the shop, you know, for product and, and this and that. And if you can get OP kits, we're, we'd, be, we'd love to be able to put, run tournaments here. Um, and and they, if they can see that, then that's that should be an easy sell. Uh, I, I mean, at least it would be to me. As soon as you look at the numbers, how much an OP kit is, and then like, and you run a tournament at five bucks a head and give away like a pack or two per entry, like you're you're making money uh, as a shop owner. Like, and and it's a lot better margins on that stuff than it is on some of the other card games out there, like Magic and so forth. Like it, it's. It is beneficial to his shop to be able to sell Destiny product. It just is. Uh, and, and it is a profitable market for them. Um, I think they just need to be exposed to it. I, I just, for whatever reason, and I think part of it might be the history with FFG and how they've run some of their stuff and some other issues that they've had in the past and current issues that they have going on. There's kind of a block with some shop owners about that. And I understand it. Um, but at the same time, it is still profitable. Yeah, and that was kind of our issue. When we went uh, to the store, we've kind of did over the summer. We haven't really been there recently just because, it, you know, we really haven't had people to go. Um, when we first approached them, they were a little hesitant about it because they bought, like they were in that initial wave. They bought Awakenings. They realized there was a shortage, but it was flying off the shelf. So then Spirit came and they bought like so much of it. And then Empire War came, they bought so much of it but then it just sat on their shelves for so long yeah. and they felt burned by the game. And so when I came back, he was even hesitant to like even keep a box on the shelf because he wasn't sure if that was ever going to move. And like, I, I got it to an extent. Um, but you know, that also, he then also stemmed into being like hesitant to order like kits and stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, if you're drawing the line there, I don't really know how far we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go in this relationship. If you can't order a $5, you know, open play kit for us to use. Yeah. During the they, and, that's tough. Like, like if you can't get past that hurdle, yeah, that's real tough. Um, and and like I can't speak on behalf of other shops or whatever, or or what their margins are, or or how comfortable they are spending that five dollars to try and start something. Um, but I know for me, like when I actually look at the numbers and how everything breaks down, um, I, I feel like that game is more profitable to local game stores than other games that are more commonly sold. Yeah. It's just that the other games have consistent organized play, have consistent product, and they have the ability to know when this is going to be there. And, and 
there's a, there's a certain amount of security in that when you know you can count on X amount of product moving in X time on X date, especially for for your smaller shops. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what, like, even the biggest thing of, like, the... Because what we only bought one set from him, Spark of Hope, right? Or no, we, we got two sets from them. We came, like, right no, when the... Convergence. Yeah, Convergence, because I remember we got our Rivals kits and starters from him as well. Yep. Um, and then we did that uh, Little League, too. Yeah, yeah, we did the starter league. That was fun. Um, but, yeah, I remember, like, Spark of Hope more so. Uh, it was like we were trying to give him dates, and he just wasn't, you know his alliance rep wasn't exactly sure when things were coming out. I could tell he was already frustrated. I was like, man, he hates FFG. I, I can just feel yeah. it. <laughs> Feeling his well, soul. I, I'll, I'll spoil this for you and all your listeners. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will not, and, and game shops will not get a release date on the destiny product until two to three weeks before it's actually officially going to be released. Yeah. Well, I mean, we as players, like, I mean, at least maybe not the general public, but like I'm plugged into a lot of discords and things like that. And every time I knew before the shop, I'd hear and I'd message them and be like, Hey, are you taking pre-orders yet? This is coming out this day. They're like, uh, let me call the rep just to make sure. Yeah. Like I yeah. haven't heard yet. Yeah. Because like, we don't like, there's no update. Like there's no, there's no phone call that goes out. There's no email blast. Um, like those times that Yeti and myself have been able to spoil those street dates is because, I'm pretty sure Yeti is just like me and he's on the phone with his rep every day. Once we get close to that window, trying to find out what that date's going to be. Yeah. Uh, because I, I mean, for us and for my shop, like those are some of the biggest events we have every year are those box tournaments. Um, I, I mean, you know, of course magic pre releases and stuff are also pretty big, but, but those, those box tournaments and stuff like that, that we schedule around release dates, like, we need time to get those out there and let people know that they're going to happen. And the best window that I've been able to get on the last three or four sets has been at best three weeks. Like that's a lot of commitment you're asking for people in a very short period of time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like we said too, the biggest ones we had were around release. And I think that's going to be general across the board. Cause that's when people are most excited to mm -hmm. like, make sure they get out to the shop. Yep. But, so January, hopefully, sometime, someday. I'm hoping. I, I will say now that if it comes out January 10th, I'm gonna make it legal for mine. 10th is what eight days before yours, right? Yes, it's a week before. Yeah, yeah, you're the 18th because yeah, 17th would be a little too. <laughs> People will be showing up early, just opening boxes at your store, and be like, "Oh, hope I got this thing." You know, I mean, now that you said that, Jack, I might make it legal. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage everybody. No, I won't. I won't do that to anyone. That's dirty. Yeah, that's hilarious. I would love it, but I like it dirty. All right, all righty, all right. Just make it weird. Flock has been quiet for the last twenty minutes. I feel like I knew that about you. <laughs> <laughs> just I saw your name was Flocked in, and I just assumed that. <laughs> Harry, Harry flocked in here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Any other thoughts from anybody just on like local scenes and well, in uh, some of our patron questions, yeah. we have some questions about alternate formats and things like that. We can, we can get into, but any I, other comments? I love on local group? scenes. I will hope to be a part of one someday. <laughs> I love inside jokes. Can't wait to be. Part well, of I mean, one. you're going to be going over Jack's basement soon though. That's, That's where you're going to start off. Like I, okay, so Jack's basement, basement with beers. Look, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't know if Jack's basement's the best place to start a like <laughs> lit place because everything I've seen on there is somebody getting their ass handed to them by Jack. That's Brian. So, so, yeah, you, know you know what my first game of Destiny was? I'll tell you. So my first game of Destiny was against Jack, right? And uh, you know, I'm just one of the starter kits, and Jack just pulls out uh, Leia Akbar. And uh, proceeds to it's a trap for fourteen minutes. It's like welcome to destiny. And then so, well, here you a are. Fun game. And here I am, and I can't get out because I've been buried so deep. You know, it started out a lot of fun. <laughs> and now here we are. Yeah, it's it's a uh, one Ewok right stream thing. later. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Ewoks discard to reroll dot com. Christ, it's oh. someone. Uh, if if you can if you can hear me, I need help. <laughs> Dude, that Ewok game, like, I've watched that three times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 
I, I feel like I put the... it. I feel like I might have even put it up one day for the to watch on a Friday. I, I, <laughs> that, was a, that was very entertaining. Yeah, if anything, I am a you know a great dummy, great great punching bag. That has to be like our most viewed like <laughs> video by like a mile. Well, Jack just lubed me up with uh, with alcohol for hours beforehand. And oh, I, was like, I did. I'm gonna play some Ewoks. As if you just don't do that always. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, or... not always. It's usually after. It was. It wasn't the Fourth of July. Was it uh, like we were celebrating? No, the 4th no, of it July? was. It was after that because it was the set came out that weekend. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um. Because I was bitching about the release date being <laughs> on a holiday weekend again. Just like yeah. last year. <laughs> uh, stream live on July 6th. Okay. All right. So we might have been doing July 4th things and uh, drinking. <laughs> so. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I also have no excuse because uh, whether it was a holiday or not, you know. <laughs> Big true. Uh, good times. Um, I hate that. There was. Thing. How long ago did I do that, though? I didn't. I calculated like the. Uh, the standings and like the records of everybody of yeah. anybody on our streams. And Brian was just like, all right, I want to die. <laughs> he yeah. It. And it was like, yeah, Scott's, Scott's got an even uh, 500 record. Uh, you know, Flockton's coming in with this. Brian's won once <laughs> out of, out of uh, 30 plus games on the stream. And I was like, uh-huh. Yeah, I am uh, uh, a good joke. Cool. Good times. Good to know. Great, great times. Stop letting your buddy kick your butt on stream. Yeah, no, I, I've told that story too many yep. times because it's just so funny and true <laughs> and sad. Yeah, but you see, you do have this, man. You got to go to Worlds, and since Jack had to leave, like you are now the face of Golden Dice. Right? And, and I think <laughs> that's <laughs> my, like, my highest point of destiny of all time. Not because I did well, not because I played well, <laughs> but because people were like, hey, you got an Ewoks? And I was like, I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even like... Oh, you're the Ewok guy. Nice. A lot of so the conversations were always just like, "Hey, uh, you the guy?" And I'm like, "Uh, I think so." They're like, "You got Ewoks?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm the guy." (laughs) (laughs) You got any more of those Ewoks? So I walked up to you. I walked up to you. I'm like, "Dude, where's my (laughs) Ewok?" (laughs) (laughs) People people are coming to me from all over. They're like, "Hey, we're from this place. Ewok, please." (laughs) <laughs> like I, I couldn't get a conversation in because people would come up to me like, um, sorry to bother you, but Ewok. <laughs> hey man, sorry but about hey, Jack, okay. but uh, you got an Ewok. <laughs> yeah, it was the conversation. It was like, hey, we're really sorry to hear. Hope Jack's okay. Can I have an Ewok, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, got my face. <laughs> Goodbye. But I did you a solid, man, because like the world's largest Parker Simpson fan came up to you for yeah. one. He did, and and he you didn't have one though. for him. And I, know, so yeah. I gave him one of mine, and I was like, "Here you go, I got you." Yeah, I I ran out really really fast, and if you didn't come see me within the first like two hours that I was there, I, out of like a nine or ten hour day, I you, you were you were in trouble because <laughs> people because like people that had had them before, like I don't know, there's five hundred some people there, so they would just come up to me and they're like, "Hey, uh, Ewoks," and I was like, "Did I give you?" And they're like, "Nope." I was like, okay, all right. Dude, was this your first time at Worlds? Yeah, this is my first Worlds. Oh, so you don't know the thing about the hole punch. Like, you're supposed to carry a hole punch and pull, <laughs> punch a hole. Really? Either in their badge or their band, right? Oh. Like, that's what FFG does. I did not know that. And yeah, no, X- this was my first. <laughs> it's my first time. All right, well. Well, the wristbands, it didn't. the one, two, and three didn't matter for Destiny anyway, so you actually could have yeah, used you it. Have, you should have taken a one up. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around with a pocket full of those. A lot of them are already taking them off anyway. <laughs> a lot of them are like, "Oh, it doesn't matter for Destiny. Uh, I'll just take them all off. They're scratching my wrist." Yeah. So, um, um side note, Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the streams. Okay. All right. You're gonna pull up the <laughs> actual statistic. Uh, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me get a bottle of Yingling. Do, do you know what your <laughs> Do you know what your win percentage is? Uh, it, it's it below a percent, isn't it? Uh, it's thirteen point six four. There you go. Oh, that's a lot better than I thought it was. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So here's the thing, right? I, I it's, <laughs> dude, Tommy's is 25. Never, He's bad. I'm never like, oh wow, you know, let me delve this 
in the basement games because whatever. I'm always <laughs> like, huh, let me let me try something fun and creative, like Emphasis Nest Watt. And that was the only deck that I did well with. I was gonna say you won, uh, you beat Scott with that. <laughs> everything else is like, oh, I'll try uh Tarkin Django. And color. like in theory Shot call. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I, sue me for trying to do something to really look over. Okay. Right. Yeah, there hey, you go. You can play downgrades in this deck that does downgrade things. Oh, I'll throw some shock collars in there. Uh, I'd like to also draw your attention to the Jung Pa Classic where I killed Kyle with a wounded, so. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. Suck it. Yeah. Um, it might have been two wounded. I don't yeah. know. You really anyway. tuned that deck, dude. Really got the tier eight. Uh, yeah, well, okay, I don't, okay, I just wanted to have fun, okay, and and Jack's all about, like, becoming a Pokemon master. Yep. I only top deck, I don't know. Gross. Good times, thanks, Jack, for bringing that up, because now <laughs> I, now, now, not only am I angry, I just feel bad. <laughs> Ewoks.discardreroll.com Um, all right. Uh, we'll move I on, hope, and I hope my um, players have, and like throughout my life find that. Like, I, I hope no one decides that like who I'm working for. They're like, oh, you know, Star Wars Destiny is a cool game. They just stumble upon Chip's uh, link. I'm gonna send it to your, <laughs> to your boss. Hey, uh, Ewox, <laughs> man, and he hand a bunch out did, at uh, Worlds. You did 17 damage. Wow, good times. <laughs> What's our next topic, Jack? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will move on to uh, the ever uh, amounting disappointment that is PAX Unplugged. Brian? Oh, sorry. 13%. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's more than 13%. Shut up. All right, we'll round out 14. Hell 14. yeah. Get that. Give you that extra point four. Um, hey, I-, I could always use an extra point four. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. So, uh, Pax Unplugged, in case you didn't know, uh, previously for. Uh, <laughs> I, I, had, I had a follow up question, but I left it alone. <laughs> oh. Uh, I think I'm done here. <laughs> should we should we just move you to a different channel like Thunder? Yeah, I'm good. I'll, good night, guys. I'll see you later. Um, Pax Unplugged uh, has generally been the kickoff for Galactic Qualifiers, which we've had for the past like two years, I guess. Um, and that was in Philadelphia. There they would uh, debut kind of like the new season, new swag. Um, it was the first one in the first year, I'm pretty sure. And then last year, it debuted new spot glosses. It had, like, the Cassian, Snoke, Luke, Grievous, Leia, and DJ were the new ones last year. Uh, the oh, mats were DJ. delayed, though, uh, so we didn't actually get the new mats. So it was kind of like a weird kickoff. But, you know, right up FFG's alley of half kicking off because things were missing. Hey, um, guys, remember Mr. Bones? Oh, yeah, Mr. Bones. That was never that? announced, though. Great kit. What? Yeah, yeah, like it, th- that one, like the Snoke spot loss came out, and then like two weeks later, they they bumped them up a point. I remember that. Oh, well, yeah, that was the Thrawn Snoke meta. That was all yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But like know. everyone, everyone got their oh sweet Snoke. They got their Snoke spot loss. Two day, two months, two weeks later, it's like yeah, he's bumped up a point. Yeah. Uh, well, that needed to happen. I didn't. We didn't even play in standard that because I just didn't care. I was like, whatever. I'll pass up a, an opportunity to get a world seat and just play pods. If that means I don't yep. have to play Thrawn Snoke all day. But anyways, Pax Unplugged was big. Uh, they got about 80 to peep, uh, like 80, 85 uh, for all three events. They did Trilogy, Standard Trilogy last year because uh, Infinite wasn't a thing. Rotate uh, Rotation hadn't happened yet. Um, so you're looking at like 240 people uh, playing in these events. Not 240 unique people, but, you know, with the repeats. Um so it was really good. It was really big. And now PAX Unplugged, Yeti Gaming took over the contract for uh, these type of Did events. They? And Did they know? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Um, and the weird thing is, is like you can talk about, oh, Cascade has the contract through the year, but like everything else is firing off at PAX Unplugged. Key Forge is going. L- they just announced L5R, which is through FFG, not through Yeti anyways. But like Key Forge is going well. There's X-Wing stuff. And pretty much everything but Destiny is at PAX Unplugged. And the hopefuls say that there's pods, but if you 
go through previous uh, events and cons where it's pods only. Um, they've almost never fired Pax East last year, maybe fired one pod over the course of four days, maybe. Um, so it's really not looking good for Pax Unplugged. It might get through this year just because people were expecting an event, bought stuff, or you know, bought a pass, and now they're you know already planning to go. So they might just go do a pod, but really do the other thing. But seems very unlikely. They did say the prizes are going to be pretty cool. They're going to have all the current Spock loss ones. They're going to have uh, the monochromatics and uh, the GQ playmats. And there's a chance that Worlds playmats could be there as well. Uh, whether or not that actually happens remains to be seen. So, I mean, just the fact that there's monochromatics means that there's more prizes from last year. But overall, the format of just pods is pretty, pretty dumb. Um, and... I've pretty much any, I feel like the only things I tweet anymore on the Golden Dice account are salty comments at Yeti Gaming. Um, true. Big true. Big true. <laughs> That's all true. I do. I mean, I just think it's like an embarrassment for the game overall to take one of your largest events um, and just turn it into literally nothing. And for no reason yet, right? Yeti Gaming hasn't yes. said anything. Uh, FFG hasn't said anything. And I think it's really just a joke on both ends. Like this isn't, if you just blame Yeti, I think you're just being short-sighted. If you just blame FFG, you're being a little short-sighted. Like, I don't know. Just the fact that anytime I've asked or tried to have in contact, it's always been like, well, we'll see. There might be things coming. We're, we'll let you know when we know. And at this point, PAX Unplugged is two weeks out. A week and a half. Or yeah, two weeks, <clears throat> two and a half weeks. Um, it's that first weekend of December. So the fact that there's nothing, I think it's a joke. And as great as FFG, I feel like, has been doing with communication, um, Recently, there's been some hiccups along the way. And to me, this is just like... I, I think know. how great Matt Holland's doing with communication. Well, I mean, they created no, the no, position. No, 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 <laughs> Do not put them together. Matt Holland is precious and needs to be protected at all costs. Sure. No. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, but it's like, they didn't even give him anything, though. Like, it's not like Matt Holland's communicating anything about PAX Unplugged. He, like, Shh, he's a saint. Don't talk bad about him. Well, that's not his fault. I mean, anything I he gets is, you know, he's pushing towards us. I don't know. I think it's a joke. I think it's, like, one of the huge disappointments. I don't think there's any excuse for them. There's no reason for them not to be doing it. Sure, Primes are everywhere. Sure, Worlds was in October. But to just miss out on events like this is just a... I think it's a joke. I don't know if you guys have different opinions, and maybe I'm think i'm being too harsh but no i, agree. I have a slightly different opinion Ooh, spicy what yeah. is it oh you want to hear it <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> no just don't say Shit, it don't no. elaborate <laughs> oh my god i don't want to hear it so um i don't think it's in t- I, I i don't disagree with like yeah it's a disappointment and everything but like at this point though it was kind of expected that we weren't going to get a galactic qualifier um and the fact that they're starting what what's the new the new thing they're doing the grand they're doing in Las Vegas, so but that's just Nova like that's that's not anything yeah, new. Yeah, but more. like but like, and with the whole uh, uh, worlds invite only, so the Galactic Qualifier only gives you like the one seat of worlds invite. Uh, so over the course, unless so how else were they if they were trying to fill up like world seats for invites? How else are they supposed to? get people to get world seats I mean, you can't just give you can't just give it to people that go five all of them that goes six and oh and five and one and then blah 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 because if you do that then like these primes were going or the, the sword championships were going or no the primes they have going now you're going to give other people some world's invites so i think it was kind of like a yeah we could do a galactic qualifier or once we get things set up for how we're going to start doing world's invites we're going to set up something else so why waste their time with getting all new GQ mats and stuff like that if they're only going to have like one or two before they come out with something you know in like March or dis- or, or uh, February that's going to be something completely that's supposed to allow more people to get worlds invites because I think that's what they want to try to do is get a bunch of worlds invites and then have a you know last chance qualifier. I mean, but having nothing like no communication saying hey we're just axing GQs there won't be anything at PAX and just stay tuned, we're going to have something new coming in January, February, March, or whatever. But it's like, they need something else to give out invites, because if you have two yeah. grands, Gen but like, Con, but and like... Right now, right now, Galactic Qualifiers doesn't do it, though. Yeah, well, they do. It, does, it, gives you, it gives you one, and if you have three events, it gives you World's yeah. Invites. But, I mean, that's there that's was, not I, enough for World's Invites. I'd rather right, just, but, no, I'd rather just not have that and make a new event and have you know, 20 they, people make nothing. it. But there's nothing, though. It's, right. So they're replacing it with nothing. They're just taking it away. 
Yeah. So now there's three invites go to zero. Yes. Right. Yeah, but also they would have to make. I guess I'm assuming that they do a lot to qualify. They would have to have, you know, new mats, new spot losses, and all that stuff. No. I mean, they could just. That's, send what, they've all been doing, that's what they're doing for all the other Galactic qualifiers. They, they, every single one, they usually bring out something, something new. Yeah, but I, how much I think work is that? I think your prize there is the world seats. Yeah, and I think yeah. if you if you carry over the monochromatics and everything else like they were doing, you would be fine there. Nobody would be bitching about that at all. Yeah, everybody would be super excited about that. You wouldn't have to do anything other than pick a box up from FFG headquarters and mail it to said party that runs a bet. Yeah. Um, because the seat to worlds is nothing you have to mail. Um, and, and that is nothing that is not even a product you have to worry about. There's nothing you have to make there. Um, so you, what you're losing out on money first off um, for the company and for the game. And it's a bad look for the game as well. Um, I, I, th- I think it falls more on Yeti than it falls on FFG. I think they're both at fault. Um, but I do think it falls more on Yeti than FFG. Um, man, like with everything else that they've got going on and the things that they're actually doing right, this just feels like a huge miss to me as well. Um, and it it is super frustrating. Um, I was actually looking forward to the trip back up to Philly. I had a blast there the past two years I went. Um, I I just kind of took foresight this time when they didn't actually announce anything and was like, I'm not buying a ticket until somebody tells me something's going on. Um, so I, I will not be going. I did not actually spend any money on this one this year. Uh, but like, that's just, I, I think it's a huge miss. And on that um, note too, like of not buying a badge or buying a badge, like, I don't know, the reaction by the community a little bit has been disappointing to me. And I mean, maybe it's a small percentage, but like you go back to Nova, right. And the whole debacle with Nova, like closing down on seats and giving us less than what was originally promised. People were then like, well, you should have just bought your badge back when they went on sale, you know, just to guarantee, you know, you had a seat or whatever. But it's like now then we're at this point where we're at something where people bought their badge. And like that was our exact reason of how why it was bad for Nova to do that, because people wait, you know, for travel, for plans, for family things, making sure they can go. And it's like now the people who buy stuff early are getting screwed because, you know, they had faith in something that was going to happen for the third year in a row. I don't know. It's just been really weird by people reacting and like justifying the actions of like Yeti oh. and FFG and screwing over the customers who are trying to support a game that's already like, you know, trying to fish for big events and trying to get people out. I don't know. It, it's crazy I, to me. Je- I don't exactly agree with you on that one because like Nova was pretty much announced almost immediately as as the other one was finished. Like you knew. Uh, Nash, like Nova, the Nova Open was going to happen the following year. Uh, you, you even knew the date coming out of that weekend. Um, and, and that one, one of the guys that plays at my shop was actually uh, one of the judges there. So, like, I, I, we had heard that story going all the way back. So, I, like, we had some, like, the way that it, I heard it was a little different than the way I guess it was portrayed. Um, because the actual numbers of seats that they had were equal to the number of entrants that they had for the year prior. So while the numbers were dropped a little bit, they weren't dropped any lower than the actual number of participants from the event the year prior. Uh, and, and now if they had had those signups at the beginning of that, they could have actually made more space available or shifted some things if they thought it was going to be a larger turnout. Um, but as it was, that's that's how it ended up uh and, and but i also understand the other side of that too man like you, there there's some variance you have to account for um and and that one was super tight uh it would have been nice to have that opened up and been able like i still feel like nova's kind of tight like personally yeah. like that one that event still feels super tight in that space even at even at 128 um but i mean i don't know man like there just seems like there there needs to be somebody to actually take charge at FFG and say this needs to be this like this needs to be the standard for how an event will be run. Uh, and, and there's nobody that seems willing to actually step up and say this is what we need X Y and Z this number of seats these number of spots we need this many people 
to pre-qualify for Worlds next year through these events. Like, there's nobody that's actually stay, sitting up and, and st- or standing up and saying those kind of things. And that's super frustrating. Yeah, like, I bet they didn't even plan out, like, the number-wise of how many people are sp- supposed to get events by the end of the year. I feel like they're just like, all right, invite only. However many v- invites we get out, we get out, and then we'll just do a last-chance qualifier and invite, round out the numbers of how many more people. So if we only throw out 50 invites, you know, then we'll do a last-chance qualifier and invite 250 people from that. Like, I don't yeah, know. like I, I felt like um, primes should have actually been graded um, by number of participants. Where like if you had like at, at certain levels, additional seats were made available to those because that would encourage some of these places that can have larger events to push to have a larger event. Um, and and the fact that like you know, like with my event, I'm trying I'm trying to get an event together that's going to be bigger than Nova. Like that's my hope. I don't know if it's going to happen, and with with the saturation of primes, it probably won't. Um, but I would love to have that, and, and it just it kind of at the same time though it kind of creates a feel bad for me that if I get that number of players, like I only still get to give out one seat. Yeah, uh, which is the same as somebody that can go to one in I'm just going to name a state, North Dakota, and, and have twelve people show up. Uh, and one person gets a seat there. I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, so, like, I'm just like that. Just feels bad. I, I think I do think that prime should be graded based on the number of entries, um, and, and that increases the number of people they get through the worlds, and that increases the size of that event, and that makes worlds capable of being something near or better than what it was last year, right, or or this past year. Yeah, I mean, like, like. My frustration simply comes from the fact that I don't think they actually thought about the plans of how to make this invite only and not have it be a fifty-person worlds. Yeah, well, I mean, we know, like, we know that it's going to be uh, what at least sixteen from it was sixteen from worlds, right? Yeah, and there's probably what like top hundred primes. Yeah, it was top sixteen from worlds. They got invite. All right, so you got top sixteen from worlds. You're going to have what top four from uh, LVO and Nova. Yep. So that's another eight. So you're looking at uh, 24 there. Plus, I think it's like 95 primes altogether in the yeah. U.S. Um, so you're looking. So you you can figure like globally, there's probably let's say let's be generous and say two and a quarter seats. Like that's still half of what they had. Yeah. Like that's still not even close. Yeah. Uh, and, and 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 then you're gonna put a last chance qualifier on and hope to draw. Another what to even get close to the number they had there this year, the last chance qualifier alone would have to draw more people than the actual event itself is booked for. Like I, I think they're like the numbers seem skewed there in the wrong direction. Yeah, I, I feel so. I mean, that's just how I see it. I, I mean, I could be totally off, and like next year, worlds could be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it, I'm definitely in the boat where it's like. Uh, I'm a little frustrated, mostly like, I don't know, if they just even simply just add GQs and there's another 25, 30 invites handed out that way, like, I'm yeah. definitely feeling better. And, like, even if I don't have an invite, I'm most likely going to Worlds next year to do the last chance qualifier, simply because how I saw this year's Worlds was set up. And, like, I would gladly that be, if I end up failing and missing on the last chance qualifier, like, at least I had a competitive tournament to play in and then I can just grind pods the rest of the week and just knowing the community that worlds is like i still think you can have a good time going even if it's just the last chance qualifier that you're expecting to play in so i'd still promote people to do that but it's certainly like there's a way that ffg can handle that and set this up for it to succeed or they can just kind of be you know lackadaisical about it and do nothing yeah and most of most of my frustration personally has come from the op side um like not even like the product delay is whatever that's gonna happen like I, and and I don't even care uh, and, and I can make do like I can work around that um, but the organized play stuff is is where the majority of my frustration comes from like you talking about kits and things like that yeah yeah I, I feel like the kits um, in particular like the uh, the organized play kits and these tourney kits that are not available. Uh, to 
locations are, is insane to me because they have the product. It's not a production issue. It's a distribution issue. And it's not getting out to stores that can support the game. Like that, I can't even fathom a business model where that would be acceptable. To actually have something made and not have it readily available to your target audience. That makes no sense to me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get wound up on that one. <laughs> um, but, like, it, it's... The, the the thing that frustrated me the most was right before Worlds where um, I'm sitting here trying to find things to keep my local community interested who's not going to Worlds. And then I see posts pop up on Facebook of organized play kits that are readily available and shipped out and showing up in stores in the Minnesota area uh, and a few other select locations, but not readily available to the rest of the community at all. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And why don't I have it? Um, I remember that. Yeah, I, the, I, I feel like our my community here locally is active enough that like we should have access to that. And, and it's a bad look for me as a store owner when somebody comes into me and says, "Hey, man, when are we going to get this kit?" And I'm like, "What kit are you talking about?" Um, that looks bad on me. And then that looks bad on my store because I'm not being given the same information or access to the same product as other locations, whether it's due to uh, proximity to the home office or whatever the case might be. Um, that's a bad look for us. Uh, and, and I like, I, I felt bad about that. I was like, I don't know, man. Like I, I will find out for you next week. Um, and, and like, that was an ongoing thing for me for the past month and a half, trying to figure out where those kits were, how do I get them, and what hoops do I have to jump through to get them in my store yesterday. Like, and, and that's super frustrating that it's got to be like that for any shop owner to promote a game and to improve business for another company. Well, that was I remember that, that day too because I actually – was going into the Facebook group to look because somebody a few days before that had posted about getting a bones kit. And I was curious mm -hmm. to look and see like, where were they? It seems like Canada was getting a bunch, but I just wanted to uh, read that group. And then I pull up the destiny page and the first post is like, Hey, we got these promos at our store in Minnesota. And I'm like, what is this? Like why yeah. we're, I'm still not seeing bones kits. And we're now at season three open play kit that hasn't been talked about at all. Aside from this one store who just happened to has it. I don't know. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah, and it and it was quite possibly the best kit that they've made. Yeah, Neiman's Pulse Cannon, Admiral. It's really good. Yeah. I mean it's it's a and like if you want to talk about like just that kit alone, like that's the kind of kit that helps keep a store going. Cause like your guys, like local guys might not want to put out the money to buy three boxes or pay fifty dollars for multiple copies of a, a Neiman. Or, or $25 or $30 cop dollars a copy for an Admiral. But, like, if they have a copy and they can get a second copy with a promo to be able to make a play set happen, especially of a Neiman, that's a unique card anyway, um, like, that is, that is so good for those guys to actually be able to play, like, a competitive deck on a local scene, right? Like, we, we know when you go to Primes, you need to have all copies of your dice and cards that go into it. But in a local level, like... That's a good way to get people on a competitive level and get them interested in buying more product to complete those lists. Like it works both ways. And, and it, it's really frustrating to see that not given out to the public. Yeah. Or, or the the entire public, I should say. Yeah. I mean, and how do you guys, uh, like, I guess that's a question too. How do you deal with the open play kits? Like in your group, do you just hand them out when people come in or people play for them or? Oh no, we, uh, every week, um, we, we, we pick a different one each week. Um, and so like, it's like a $5 entry for the tournament. Um, we do, uh, pack, uh, a pack into the prize pool for the end of it. And then we give out the promos to everybody. Um, because for me, it's more important to, use those kits over a couple weeks and make sure everybody has the cards that they need. So I give out a copy of each week's promos to everybody who participate participates. 
So, like, if, if you play in one of my tournaments and I've got 16 people, I'm giving out 16 copies of both of those cards for the week. So, everybody's going to walk out with a name in. Everybody's going to walk out with the other card in that pack. Um, and then we do, you know, we, we actually open packs. And then we draft the uh, legendaries and rares out of that. Oh, nice. Uh, so, and what generally ends up happening is most of the guys who've been here for a while have their play sets. Um, so they're just playing to play. Uh, and what they end up doing is giving away their picks to the newer guys. So a newer guy will show up and be like, I finished last. I'm not going to get a good card. And then one of the guys who wins is like, cool, I got a play set of Neiman's here. You can have this one. Uh, yeah, so awesome. like it, it works out really well. Um, but yeah, like, that's been that's been really frustrating to me, just that whole organized play side of it. Yeah, I don't blame you. And I, I'm sure you guys have even more frustration with the fact that you don't have a store that's even willing to fight to get them for you. Nope. Yep, it's annoying. And honestly, I was, I was talking to Jack about this earlier, and it's kind of almost killing my, my enjoyment of the game, not having a right? Because my options are don't play or... Uh, 13%. <laughs> or C, get your little so either, started. Either I get my <sighs> kicked in, or I don't play. Huh. I, it's, it's it's just frustrating, because... Dude, you can drive down to tag, man. You can come down and, here and play. Hey, and I can't wait. I'm very <laughs> excited. Three hours. Dude, I, got a, I got an eight-year-old waiting to stomp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I, I, I don't care if I lose. I just want to get her face kicking my ass. That's all. <laughs> just fine so by me. Waiting. By she will else. explain it to you. <laughs> I took all your mitigation away, so you can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Flockton's on his third beer. <laughs> they capped me, dude. <laughs> they, did ca they capped him, too. Yeah. <laughs> and Flockton's like, okay. And he came back like, they won't serve you anymore. They capped me. <laughs> Brian, option C is to uh, promote your local scene. Build it up. Yeah, do everyone something. I talk to is like, wow, you put money into that, huh? And I'm like, uh, too much. Too much. That's just because you talk no, to Mikey but, who hates it. <laughs> no, but listen, I, I, it's, it's kind, of, kind of difficult to... It's not for everybody. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that this game is not for everybody. And it's it's kind of hard to keep your... Like, well, I, I'm so far deep into this game at this point that I'm just, you know... Oh, so that's got delayed seven months? Sure, whatever. But, like, not everyone's going to be like, all right, well, I guess I'll display the same for seven months with no updates or changes and... You know, there has been updates, but still, like it's it, it it's it's a downer, man. Like I just I want I want change, but it it is tough to to build up a scene and to get people interested. You're starting. You're gonna put in work. That's gonna be your role of golden dice. You're gonna do something. Uh, I have talked to a bunch of people. So like now that I'm actually on the podcast somehow by some. <laughs> you know, luck for for you guys personally. Uh, I I have mentioned to people the gift like, hey, to the yeah, I, I play this game and uh, I'm on a podcast and blah blah. And they're like, oh yeah, where can I find you? And you know, I tell them all that and I kind of like explain the game to them. And they're like, oh, that sounds cool. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, it's it's you know, pretty low buy-in and blah blah blah. And they're like, yeah, okay. And they kind of like you know that gif where Homer Simpson like fades into the bushes. <laughs> that's like that's them. Like they're just kind of like, oh, okay, and and they just I never hear anything. So it, it's a lot harder than it, than it seems. Yeah, just give them beer, man. Hey, <laughs> well, Brian drinks it all, so they won't won't be able to. See, that's the problem, man. You got to share. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't share beer. But then you know what? You got to learn. Oh, so that's uh, a life skill. About a week ago, a week <laughs> and a half maybe, Brian comes over. He's like, Jack, I got something for you. Wow, oh, man, what what would you get? Got me a bottle of my favorite wine. I'm like, oh, what a nice guy. He's like, oh, can I try it? I was like, yeah, of course. And he tries it. He's like, oh, I love this. <laughs> then he fills the bottle up to, or his glass up to the rim, basically. So it's like half the bottle's gone already. <laughs> and then he goes for a second glass, like starts filling up all the way again. He's like, Jack, you want a little bit? I'm like, nah, man. It's all you. So Brian <laughs> bought me a bottle of wine and then drank it all. Yeah, was that right. was that your Jersey blush? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I, I listen, man. I listen. So. <laughs> oh, Look at Brian's so a believer in the in the blush now. Ah, wow. dude, I, it's so good. It's so good. 
You, you know you're not supposed to drink the entire glass full, right? Like, that's not how, like, appropriate wine drinking goes. Uh, I mean, that's how I do it at my house, too. But, like, that's not, <laughs> that's, like, not good for public use. Uh, well, no, I was over at Jack's, so anything goes. <laughs> it's it's non public. It's Jack's anyway. I, I was over at 13%'s house. <laughs> <laughs> 14, dude. Before 14, we changed it. Yeah, oh, yeah, 14, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. That point four really put me over the edge, you know. <laughs> you know. Um, right. Any other thoughts on uh, just OP? I guess that was the general topic we'd been talking about. We'll move on to. Yeah, I got, uh, I got one more. Go for it. Uh, get your <laughs> fixed, FFG. Yeah, amen, brother. Please. Yeah. As people who genuinely care about the game and, and want to see it do well and succeed, um, please stop shooting yourself in the foot like twice a week. <laughs> Yeah, make packs unplug great again. And Matt Holland <laughs> listening. That's not gonna fit on a hat, Jack. <laughs> make packs unplug great again. Make packs MPG Mpaga. How much wine do you have? Uh, right, no. Matt Holland, if you're listening, you're beautiful. Stay golden, Pony Boy. You're doing great. Yeah, he's definitely Pony not. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> outsiders, man. You ever to outside red outsiders? Yeah, I guess. All right, I'm gonna let you ride with it, man. <laughs> hey, it's getting it's getting late for me. It's my bedtime. I'm gonna start saying some weird. <sighs> if we don't keep uh, keep moving start? the train. Uh, All right, continue. We'll move on to uh, Patreon questions. Uh, the first one we have is from Mantra One regarding rotation. When the Legacies block rotates, do you think Infinite will gain in popularity? Uh, that's super subjective. I think. Uh, I think some people don't really have an interest in that format just because it's kind of a cluster. Uh, I personally don't have any interest in it because I, I love the memories I have of those sets. Uh, but with all the cards that we currently have, uh, it's a giant cluster. Um, so <clears throat> no, me personally, no. I mean, again, subjective. Hot take. Yeah. I Go ahead. No, I was just yelling. Brian's was a hot take of <laughs> this is subjective. You know, there's, really, there's people do whatever they war. want. Uh, <laughs> more loop. I just won't say anything then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack's got a lot of editing. Holy cow! Yeah, I told him before this started. <laughs> really, really, a lot of editing. You're gonna have a lot of editing to do tonight. I feel like you've upped your game since I showed up. Yep. Oh, it's it's like uh, uh, dueling banjos or whatever. It is. I, I'm I'm tr- I was trying to be dueling good, banjos. It's just band. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> all these edits like. are all Brian. <laughs> this is this is this is what I'm like uh, when I'm not uh, behaving. I behave for Jack most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. No, I was gonna actually kind of echo that, and until FFG takes that as a serious format. It's going to be hard for anybody else to take it seriously, especially as the set more and more sets come out and that gets expanded even more. Um, and, until they make it a serious format, I don't really feel like anybody else is going to make it one either. Uh, I do think the forty forty like Highlander Infinite is interesting, um, and it's probably the closest thing to Infinite that I would really want to get into. Um, but. Uh, Infinite as a format in and of itself needs to be addressed. Yeah. I was going to be the same thing. I was going to say, I'm not necessarily interested in Infinite unless FFG supports it, but 4040 might be the, the one thing that you would be able to get me into. 4040 Highlander or whatever, the, where it's like one card yeah. of, of each or whatever. That would slightly interest me. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to get into any side format when there's actually no support for that. Like there's no trilogy support. There's no Infinite. So I just... Aside from like one GQ, you know, I don't really care all that yeah. much. Yeah, I don't have four speeds or ancient, so I can't play infinite. <laughs> so like, yeah, I'm good. Well, 40, I mean, you 40, can 40. as long as you don't play blue. Yeah, yeah. or want to win. That is true. Or want to win exactly. There's a whole lot of other things I don't have either. From from that from that block. But it was just funny. Like everybody was so excited when they did all the negative balance of the force on infinite, but then still just nobody cared. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's awesome! Infinite's a great format. Do that in. Okay, we're still not all playing it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's that's for people who don't live in the same area code or area as Minion, who's like, hey, watch this. Infinite's broken. Let me show you something. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so <laughs> I'm g- yeah. glad we skipped that day, Brian. Yeah, me at too. Origins, we we bounced for Infinite. Yep. Man, he was like, "Oh, I've got something fun." And we were like, See ya. <laughs> "When he fun. says he has something fun, that means he has something busted." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, so we're all generally there, uh, and then Kylo Riggs says, "What infinite decks are you taking to packs?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. That's for you, Jack. I'm not going. Yeah. Nor I. <laughs> Nor Wait, so this I. is are you guys aren't going? No, I no. I mean I have my ticket, so worst case I'll just go <clears throat> and enjoy like packs unplugged, non destiny related stuff. Yeah, because yeah, so last year we didn't get to do it at all. I got I got ten minutes to walk the, the, the convention hall. Yeah. Ten yeah, minutes it, you guys gave me. And then you're like, Alright, I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, all right. It's actually a really good convention and I'm 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 actually kinda upset we're not gonna get to go this year. It's like I mean, it's a great space. It's a great location. They've got good vendors. Like, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. Um, it's just really frustrating that the main draw for me has absolutely no presence. Yep. But we're, I mean, we're, yeah, the thing is, is that if I wasn't a train ride outside of Philly, I, I wouldn't go. But since I am and I have my tickets, I'll probably go just for the convention. Yep. Um, but yeah, so Infinite Deck. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't even know. Yoda Honda. Yoda Honda. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Something with Tals and Pomaz. Man, you need to get off Tals. <laughs> 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 I, I, I made I made a deck today to to practice with. It did pretty well. Like, look, I was on Tals for Worlds last year. It's o- <laughs> It's over. It's over. <laughs> it's never over. <laughs> All right. Let's die. <laughs> Kill it All if right. you have to. It's never over. <laughs> Flockton's been killing it at Primes. And you know what characters he hasn't been playing? Aiden and Tarzan. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's done so well. Now, now Jango, we're starting to get a kick for Jango, though. One, though. I gotta, think fun. Gotta, you, you know, gotta Jango Talzin. That's got legs. I heard, I heard. I'm it has try. legs right to last place. We'll get you there. <laughs> Quicker than anything else. Uh, um... Uh, Riggs goes on to ask, can Black 1 be competitive? Is your uh, competitive? Is what? Uh, oh, Black 1's the villain one. Never mind. No, Black no, 1 Black is Pose, pose ship. ship. Oh, yeah. Okay, Black, yeah. So Black I was wrong. Oh, my God, man. So Hero's not even competitive. So uh, Black 2 is the is the villain one, right? Yeah. And that, okay. that was his second question, though. Can Black 2 be competitive? Oh, uh, can Black 2 be competitive? <laughs> well, he, he was running like a hot, like, I forget what the exact deck was, but he had a Marauder and AR. And then some other red in there, um, and so he put black one and two in his deck. He was like, "I want to have them right next to each other so I can play <laughs> a black one and two. All right. <laughs> um, black one, I think, is really solid. Actually, I do think it's a solid chip. It just with DM in the world makes it tough. Uh, but black two, uh, uh, eh, probably not. Eh. <laughs> That's eh. the best description of that chip. Eh. <laughs> With Mauler, yep. it feels okay, but then you're playing Mauler. Shane yeah, just got Mauler fit. doesn't get the cool plot, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Alan Iris asks, uh, "Why does Josh sound so angry on Facebook?" Um, it's just it's his tone, right? He's lovable in person. Yep. He's giving a big old hug in person. Um. Uh. Da da da. Kyler Riggs, if you'll only answer one question, please make it this one. Well, we already answered a few, so but we'll still answer this. Would you have rather have one million dollars or one billion grills? Uh, so is that cooking question. grills or is like barbecue grills or is like that like bear grills, grills for your mouth? Does your answer change depending on the <laughs> <answer>? <laughs> 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 Yes. I'm I'm just trying to get the context of the question right. Well, I think grills for your teeth is spelled with a Z, and this is spelled with an S. It's our detective. Uh, so I mm. think it's cooking grills. Yeah, I'll just take a million dollars. Thank you. I'll just take a million dollars and buy the number of grills I need. Or get one billion grills, sell them for more money. That's possibly... That might be the right answer. Yeah. Do I feel like selling... Because you could sell, sell them for a dollar a piece and come out ahead at that point. Exactly. Big trade. Yeah, I'm, w- Big I'm with trade. you. Where are you Yo, storm all? 
Yo, I got big brain over here. Big brain. I'm too lazy for that. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> One million dollars and no work, please. <laughs> um. Alan wants to know why did discard the reroll win a prime before golden dice because we're garbage. That's why. Fourteen percent. Oh, oh man. Well, well did didn't like Mr. Chip just say like here here's a shirt go play and just like. Uh, they did, well, they just, recruited like, all of Josh's. Josh's. Yeah, it's recruited. Yeah. 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 We didn't yeah. pull people off the street. Yeah. yeah Is discard to reroll a podcast? Nobody. I don't listens, know. I've never, so I don't know. Discard to I've never heard him. Never heard him. Um. Kyle wants to know what unprinted character do you hope is never printed? Jar Jar. <laughs> Kiati Mundi. Yo, he's my favorite character. Don't make fun of Jar Jar. Ooh, Kiati Kiati Mundi's Alec. a Alec. <laughs> yeah, I hate him. He's literally the worst Jedi in the entire world. The world, as if he's real. Uh. <laughs> the galaxy. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I actually I'd go with Admiral Ozel. Admiral Ozel. Yep. Uh yeah, nobody even knows who he is, right? Uh, uh, he's the guy like with the mustache. The, and wasn't, he, he, wasn't he on he's the one that, He's the one that just straight out got force choked by Vader. He's yeah. like, yeah, he failed me. Ugh. I feel like that guy's die would suck. <laughs> blank, 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 blank. <laughs> 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 yeah, but he had a killer mustache. True. I don't, yeah, he did have a little bit of a stash. Big he's true. Right. Big true. Um, I don't know. I would say like every character from episode one, but some of them already got printed. So yeah, I like this podcast. This one's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I'm really trying to go through my head. Like, I don't know if there's a character I'd I'd ever really be upset if they got made. Nah, not really. I'm trying to like go through resistance right now. I was like, anybody I hate from that show, but I actually do kind of enjoy that show. Um. I don't know. I failed to answer this one. Yeah. I, just never reprint. I, I would say, uh, say Kiati Mundi. That's my answer. Yeah. I'll second that. And also never reprint Jar Jar. Yeah. yeah. Jar Jar. Ah! <laughs> Jar Jar. Uh, Jar Dude, I'll, I'll, have to send you, I'll have to send you a, a picture of where my Jar is. Isn't it your coaster? Uh, well, yeah, but now it's also under my floor mat here at the new shop. <laughs> uh, please wipe your feet on Jar Jar as you enter the building. Yeah. Yeah. So... I've actually had people be like, hey, where's that Jar Jar at? And I go to the front, pick up the mat, and show it to them, and just drop it right back down. <laughs> it's where I've actually well, taught my dog to pee. All right. Green Sap says, your character picks for temporary truce tournament. So one hero, one villain, uh, no gray, no plot, no Ray Kylo. So basically, if you could run temporary truce Whoa. with any characters in the game. Yoda Kylo. Yoda Kylo. So yeah, Yoda but he won. just said you can't have Kylo. Oh, oh no, Kylo. Bent. Which Kylo? Uh, he probably Any means Kylo. the the Raylo deck. Well, sweet. Then I'll take Kylo <laughs> two and Ray one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I win. <laughs> um. Okay. So if we're not going any of the Kylos or any of the Rays, hmm. That's a good question, actually. Tolls and Qui Gon. I was gonna say that too. <laughs> uh, what about... was, I was trying to come up with the talls and pair. You stole that. Damn what it! About, uh, what about DJ Yoda? Uh, Same color. They're different color. They're different color. Wow. Oh, they're different colors. Third time. Yeah, I forgot about the question <laughs> for a second. I was thinking of Bill Hero. Oh no, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I don't know at all. Yeah, there's no way to delve fist in that, so I'm not sure I want to play it. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I guess I could delve a pirate speeder tank. So let's go, Lando. J- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's. See, what what villain character can I break three PO with? That's the question. It's true. Uh, Thrawn. There we go. Throw on 3PO. I'd play it. That's gross. <laughs> First aid? Oh, okay, that's fun. All right. What do Vader, we say? Uh, not Vader. Uh, Dooku R2. Which Dooku? Ooh. New Dooku. Or not New Dooku. Uh, the big uh, Dooku. Melee Dooku. Yeah, yeah, big boy Dooku. Oh, he Legacy point. Dooku. Yeah. yeah. Point. I can Yo, dig it. That'd be fun. Ooh. That'd be gross. His top side's 0 3. That's right. Yeah. Ooh, it's like OB R2. His top and side's 2. Oh, so he, he can activate, turn. turn into it. Activate. Ooh, that's nasty. So yep. you're like guaranteed 
A lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, a lot wait, of damage, yeah. Wait, but Brian, it says no gray, so you can't put shock collar in it. Oh. <laughs> Ten day for that. <laughs> I feel I feel like he's at sixteen percent just on the pairing alone. <laughs> uh, Smurlay followed that up. He said they're doing that tomorrow night. He's on Tarkin Padme, but was also thinking Django, Afra, or. That's oh, not hero either. villain. Yeah, you know, he was saying either Django or Afra with either Saul or Boosh. Oh, okay. Is what? It, yeah, it took me a second. I was like, yeah, Django like, Afra. That doesn't. I mean, the, I like you Django. Just play that. <laughs> yeah, Django. Yep, Django. Shock flock. Um. All right, Jedi Geek, uh, Jedi Geek Girl has four questions for us. Uh, are any of you playing Jedi Fallen Order? And if so, how far are you? And what are your thoughts so far? Uh, I'm a few uh, hours in. I did the. The two planets went to a new one and now back at another one, if that makes sense for people. I don't really want to spoil anything. It's still only a weekend. I don't know but... in the same place, yeah. I just backtracked to like one of the Yeah, they they have to go back to the one. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty great. I just think that the some of the movement is very awkward and clunky, especially when it comes to the climbing. That's my only complaint. Everything else is pretty good so far. I've lo- like the character's been amazing. I like the character, and I like the combat is is excellent. It's a I'm I'm a big fan of the Souls series, so this is a very it's um, it's very reminiscent of of Souls slash Bloodborne. Yeah, I love Cal and BD one. I love BD. If it's not an expansion for WoW Classic, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not Burning Crusade, I'm out. Yeah, right. I'm done. Oh, well, WoW's awful right now because I'm just getting ganked because I'm not level sixty. And I honors, I think. That. That's what you get for rolling on a PvP. Brian, you didn't even play before that. I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I dropped out pretty... I, dro- I was the last one to drop out, though, to be fair. True. And then Flockton came back a little bit. I was never really gone. I just had a lot of stuff going on. No one's ever really gone. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, next question is, who cursed more, Scott or Todd? Uh, the answer is actually <laughs> Brian. Um, Hi-oh! <laughs> Hi-oh! Hi-oh! <laughs> ding, ding, ding! <laughs> And the current count of f bombs here. I don't know what the exact curses were, but let me count up: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, yeah. ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Well, I write down the timestamps. Oh gosh! So twenty-one is where we're at right now. See, I'm are, good. I, I don't are you curse. really? Are you really fucking counting the number of times <laughs> somebody fucking says the word? <laughs> you <laughs> you got <laughs> I hear the Wilhelm screams <laughs> in my head right now. <laughs> oh, this is glorious. I love it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's just Jack's not talking because he's writing down. <laughs> he's just writing in brackets the entire like <laughs> minute span. <laughs> Every time Brian talks. Jack doesn't want to go to sleep tonight at all. Yeah. See, the, pa- the past three episodes of, of like, literally, right when we're recording, gets uploaded within, like, two hours. Yep. Now it's going to be, like, tomorrow It's going to be, like, 5 a.m. Or the next day. Yeah, it's going to come out Friday. Yeah, there's a chance <laughs> now you know why it's <laughs> afternoon. Now everybody knows why it takes Suggy a week to get <laughs> Another one. 23! <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another, Another one. one. Um, okay. All right. What card and dice would you say that you have the most of? I, oh, I actually have Talsons? a lot of Talsons. I'm not going to lie. I have uh, a bunch. My, my and energy bows. I pulled uh, a, a billion and five Night Brothers since I got a case of uh, conversions. I have 323 Ray Staffs. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I feel like it's got to be like Ray Staff, Original BB-8, or Jedi Robes is what I have the yeah, most Yeah, it, it's Ray Staff. Jesus. They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoever... Whoever idea it was to have this stuff you could buy in a starter kit also be openable in packs deserves to be a to be like a die in a fire. <laughs> and thankfully that never <laughs> happened again. Um but yeah, it's gotta be one of those one of those three for me. Um and the last question we have from Jedi Geek Girl is which content creator not named Teak Covenant or Golden Dice do you think will get CM spoilers first? Knights of Ren, of course. I was going to say, you guys are usually pretty early, aren't you? Uh, well, we didn't get them last time. Um, we they, There was a period of time where we did not get spoilers. 
You can, you can get Spark of Hope ones? No. Man, that was the first time they actually did us good. All the other ones we've got, like, what was the, we got that. Y'all got support. the Han ones, right? Yeah, we got mm-hmm. the Han ones, which is super thematic. Yeah, yeah Han's D, baby. Han's and- dice. <laughs> Han's dice, everyone. Come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Hans D. laughs> <laughs> that's what Alan whenever Alan's writing down his deck list he's playing Han he's like Han's D and Han's B what a guy <laughs> yeah what a guy uh, but before we got like Imperial Troop Transport and like Chain Sickle <laughs> yeah, got, and one the last ones we got were Enfist Nest I think the, at least that's, that's a, a legendary one. even if it's like yeah, yeah. Still some props, yeah. Yeah, so that would that was a pretty good one. I was gonna say I think you guys were pretty early. I don't really I know the last cycle happened like so quick of who got him. Because like I don't know, it just seemed like FFG was real last second with everything. But then the second right. come like I remember it being really weird last last go around. Um Yeah, it was crazy because they, they actually started putting out more of their own last set as well. Um, which is like kinda how I feel like they're doing this one. I've seen them pushing a lot more out through themselves yeah. directly than pushing out through content. Oh, and they did a they did a lot with Team Covenant. They gave Team Covenant like twenty cards to spoil. Yeah, and they you know then they played the games and stuff with them, which is mm-hmm. I love getting articles to tell me to come check an article for a stream in two weeks. It's just really fun. <laughs> it was really really good. I remember that. That was that was like that was pretty dirty. Yeah. Um, I I would imagine it would be Knights of Ren. Discard to reroll still gets them. I don't really know. I'm gonna go Hyperloops. Some, I'm gonna give Mike some love. I'm changing got, my vote. They've gotten them. I believe they still got them last cycle. I don't remember what they got. I think they got them. But anyways, um, and uh, next question is from Ty Pilot. Is behind the dice going to be joining the Golden Dice podcast? Uh, I wrote who? <laughs> who? Uh, <laughs> behind the dice is our uh, Matt. He's from our local area. He doesn't really play much in person, but he's kind of gone back and forth. Um, now he's yeah, here he's on the road to World Seven uh, Twenty Seventeen. <laughs> he did that was funny. He did the thing where it was like Road to Worlds, and he was practicing, but then like it was before rotation, so it's like, how is any of this relevant? <laughs> and then it was like uh, it was like November first. He's like, I missed Worlds. <laughs> That's what he tweeted out. Uh. Jack, do you have his winning percentage on stream by chance? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, all right. Just one. <laughs> yeah, no. I only keep track of Ryan's. Uh, round, round it up by point .4. <laughs> uh, Brian's the only one I care about. Aw, oh, thanks, Dad. I just want to make sure I know how bad you are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, one lover, uh, assuming the incoming nerfs hits Delves and Droids, what character pairings will be the best Admiral deck? Yoda Bale. I was very impressed by Yoda Bale. I will say Yoda that. Bale was amazing. Joe Quitek played that extremely well. He was doing things that I didn't even think of. Like it was impressive. He made me feel things that I haven't felt in a long time. I haven't seen this raw power. I've seen this raw power only once before. It didn't scare me then, but it scares me now. You, do you think that gets over Palt Mati? Um, uh, that's tough that's, to say. But yeah. I was going to say yeah, Palt Mati as well. With the he did the mysteries of the force support, yeah, yeah. And that was that like, was dirty. Like, I, like if I'm looking for an admiral deck, like I probably started, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, just like mysteries of the force, getting that off literally just ends the game because what you take from your discard pile is, I think it can be two admirals. I don't think I think it's just three upgrades you can play. Like I don't think it, yeah. yeah, you take three upgrades, so, one two one admirals, like a- and one palp saber is what you take yep. because the palp saber gets you two money to let you play admiral with the reset. And mm-hmm. now you're just resetting two more times after that. It's it's insane. Uh, that one's definitely a good one. I really wish, uh, for me, hopeful thinking or hopeful wish is, uh, I wish Jin Cass could be good. You know, one, <laughs> one admiral with them, but they're just not good. I need to let them die. If they ever get to four, your opponent did something. <laughs> yeah, if, <laughs> there's yeah. something wrong going on if they have more than one resource. <laughs> um, Yeah, Big but th- those would be the first two I would look at. Um, like basically some resetting a, like a 18 or so characters where you really want to be looking at. So I, uh, built a deck today that has Admiral in it and, uh, <clears throat> I can tell you it's not that one. 
It's it's a. Uh, is it Talzin? Is it four wide? <laughs> <jump or Gungans? laughs> it's um. It, it's a. Uh, e- you can e- turn e- a lot of die. You yes. sure can. <laughs> big true, big true. I like where you're thinking. <laughs> it's a uh, E Holdo, uh, single die bail Isatine with allies and assassin. Can't wait to reset Holdo. Uh, no, you reset vehicles in that one. Oh yeah, that's true. You can do that. Yeah. Whoa. Big can I say that's not bad? Because nobody else did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we well, gave it to Alan like, to run wait, the local tonight. When uh, he didn't show up. When you say that, uh, you know, when Brian gives a deck, it almost goes without saying. <laughs> so, oh, oh, my bad. Sorry, uh, we don't have to here, state guys. it. We don't have to. Fourteen <laughs> percent. <laughs> um, Brian, this next one is uh, directed at you. Assuming the You're incoming, goddamn right. <laughs> uh, incoming Another nerd. One. Uh, nerf hits Delvin droids. How high does Savage Asajj rise? Will it be the only t- tier zero deck left? You don't know <laughs> how high I can fly. Yes. Uh, if tiers are the number of how many events it wins, then yes, it'll be uh, t- tier zero. <laughs> Got him. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um. Shane is asking for Todd, would you rather fight a hundred Jabba the Hutt's size of Salacious Crumb or one Salacious Crumb size of the Jabba Hut? All right, so a hundred Jabba's the size of Salacious? Yeah. Or one Salacious the size of Jabba? Yeah. I'm going to go with the hundred Jabba's the size of Salacious. I that seems g- like the yeah. accurate choice because I can step on them and they're slow. I was gonna say they're all just slugs. <laughs> like at yeah. that point, pour yeah. some salt over. I, them. I don't. I don't want a wiry little giant <laughs> chasing me. That's, that's gonna be <laughs> I loved seeing him get roasted <laughs> in, uh, in a recent right? TV show. Spoiler: um, too soon. Sorry. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. <laughs> um... Uh, all right, I think we got all the... Oh, Tommy, look at that, Tommy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> What's your favorite character and aspect to play in Marvel Champions? <laughs> Have you played that at all? I've been playing a, a decent amount, yeah. Uh, I love I don't it. Know, I, I like... Uh, I, I kind of like Iron Man. Um, He's all on the setup. <laughs> yeah, like he, the setup with him is huge, and he can take over the game. Yeah. Um, so I, I like him, and I like playing him with... a. The one I played with him last was, I actually played him with um, uh, aggression, oh, okay. which was kind of weird. I, yeah. I like I I never thought of playing with aggression, and he was super aggressive. Um, and so that was pretty fun. Yeah, that's curb where I started stomped. with him. Yeah, we felt curb sad. stomped uh, Rhino. Yeah, I finally got to the point where I was just consistently beating Ry- Rhino. I was like, all right, I got I got to move on. I got to go up to Claw. <laughs> Claw is gross with four players. Yeah, I can imagine. He's even like, tough, he, like with Iron Man solo, because he like schemes so quickly. Yeah, that literally one time it like I had him, I was gonna win on the next turn, but then he the whatever the card's called where it I actually play it, the I don't remember, but it played advance where he schemed again, and mm. then I just lost because he only needed to get to eight, and he already goes for two, so all he needs is a two boost and each time, and he got it, and then I lost. Yeah. I, I feel like him on hard mode with four players is worse than Ultron. I was gonna say I actually think Claw, yeah, expert is harder than Ultron. Yeah. Welcome to Star Wars Destiny podcast called Golden Dice Podcast. It's yeah. Tommy, blame Tommy. Yeah, but yeah. you know what's better than that is Crisis Protocol. That's super fun too. I can't buy more minis. All right, I don't even play with the ones that I have. <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying it's ten. It's just ten. What? Well, just how does that work? Do you minis? buy just? One mini, and that's all I have to play with. Or no, you buy the box set, and it comes with ten, and then you like uh, draft okay. out of the ten a team of five. Gotcha. So yeah, it seems yeah. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hijack <laughs> this. So. <laughs> but that game's super fun. Um, yeah, it looks like a blast, and the models have been super awesome looking. But I can't. It's hard enough to resist buying Clone Wars Legion. That stuff looks so awesome. I saw Rex. I was like, oh man. <laughs> uh, all right, I think that wraps it up. Um, so, uh, Jacob O'Brien has a question. Yeah, Jacob O'Brien has a great question. Ooh, but that hey. dives into spoilers. I don't know if I want to talk about that. Oh, what's what's a spoiler question? Um, it's asking what the dice sides would be for a certain character from Mandalorian. 
But what uh, if, we're would still the character only like have dice though? A week. Um, I don't know. I can see you, that character not having. We're only dice. a week out still. Uh, so. I wouldn't mind if, if we did a Mandalorian segment, but I would probably say for the rest of the episode, if somebody's not wanting spoilers, <laughs> they would tune out at this point. But we're already two hours, so we probably shouldn't go on a Mandalorian rant at this point. Uh, I, could, I could. We we definitely shouldn't tell people that Vader's back in the Mandalorian. Like, people would lose their shit. <laughs> wow, I can't believe that Darth Vader's Luke's father. No, oh, dude, dude! <laughs> He actually... Too soon, dude! Stop <laughs> it! That's that's a that, ladies and gentlemen. That's a fifty-year-old spoiler. If you haven't uh, <laughs> watched Star Wars, I'd click out now. <laughs> I love that. I love that Simpsons episode. I love that Simpsons episode. All right, um, we're gonna start wrapping up. Uh, Todd, do you have any plugs that you want to go out for your for your Prime for Knights of Ren? If people are interested in hearing you more, where should they go to? Uh, I mean, yeah, Knights of Ren, um, we're, we've been kind of sporadic with putting out content right now, um, but, like, we're hoping to get back at it soon, uh, especially once the holidays pass a little bit. Um, we we kind of ran into a a few issues with people in personal lives, and people have things called families and whatnot, and blah. So, yeah, we, we kind of ran into a backup with putting some stuff out, uh, but we're hoping to get back at it soon. Um, as far as for me, uh, the shop's got Air Prime coming up January 18th. Um, if you're on the East Coast, man, it's going to be a place to be. We've rented out a location. We can hold up to 140 players. Um, we're actually going to be giving away airfare at Air Prime, um, so it's worth the trip. Uh, we have a side event. We have we have multiple side events scheduled for it as well. We're trying to make it an all-day thing that gives people an opportunity. Like, if you have a bad day in the prime, well, here's a couple other things you can do. Here's a couple other events going on. We're going to be holding a Magic pre-release there because it's the same weekend as the release of the new Magic set. Uh, we're going to be holding a Key Forge uh, side event. Um, we've got a Magic. We've got a Star Wars Destiny Second Chance tournament. Um, if you go 03 in the prime, you can drop from the prime and enter into the second chance tournament for free for a chance to win a box of covert missions. Oh, I can't wait to do that. There you go, Brian. There you go, Brian. You have 13%. Like, Brian, I I built this for you, man. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, (laughs) I was like, how do, how do I get Brian to show up? I got it. I got it. My tweets don't work on me. Only money. Dude, that's from episode one, man. I can't buy in. <laughs> one of the best episodes ever. Just quote episode two, Ryan. I'll give you an episode two quote. Any, little any, Jedi. Oh go. my god, you hurt my soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I got a prime. <laughs> got a prime. Do you say what date that was? That's the eighteenth. It's uh, January 18th. Uh, if you're on Facebook, go to Total Access Games. It's one of our events there. You can purchase tickets through that event right there. All the tickets are going through Eventbrite. That way we got make sure we got everybody locked into their seat. And there's no question. So please sign up there if you're interested. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a time. There's also going to be beer there. So oh, in. I'm in. Yep, see? I'm Look. in. Look, I'm covering the bases for you guys. I'm doing what I can. This is I don't need to go to Worlds. I just need to go to Todd's Prime. That's what I'm telling you, man. Like, I'm trying to set something up here. Like, honestly, for me, like, we've put a lot out into this because, like, the Destiny community as a whole, not even mine locally only, like, the Destiny community as a whole is f***ing amazing. And and, and if, if you don't realize that yet, you haven't gone to an event where you've seen enough of these people together to realize how good, like, these guys from Golden Dice and the guys from Discard and the guys from Destiny Council, the Artificery guys, Knights of Rand, and whoever, Hyperloops, man. Like, all of these guys are good guys putting out content for people because they give a shit about the game. Um, and, and the players in these communities are awesome. Uh, and, and I just want to have, like, a celebration of that. And hopefully we can, we can hit the numbers. Like, I, I'd love to see it be as big as a Nova. So, but I mean, I, I'm I'm happy with whatever we get, but like we we really want it to be something. We'd like to make this an annual occurrence. We'd actually like to turn it into an event that we could run annually with multiple games. 
Um, so, and this is where we're going to start it at. Destiny started my shop. This is going to start my chance of trying to make some kind of con type convention type weekend event. So we'll see what happens. Cool. I'm excited for it. We'll be, uh, we'll be there streaming it. It'll be a good time. Hell yeah. I think there's a few people up here from uh, Albany area that are possibly going down. The The airfare for next year's Worlds was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. 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 So like, that would, that would... That's what I wanted. I wanted to make it like if, if anybody was coming from even locally, like for me, like I, I play the game as well. And like if I'm going to make a trip more than an hour away, like I, I want it to be for a reason and I want it to be for something. We've got some other stuff we haven't announced yet. Like we're gonna wait and announce um, after Thanksgiving, like some giveaways, some raffles, some other stuff we're doing as well. Um, but like we want to make it an event that's worth people making the trip for. And here's so, one and, night and at your that Friday was, night. I felt like I felt like airfare was fair. Um, oh like, yeah. And, and I, I feel like for for us to actually try and turn this into something, we had to offer something that made it different from everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for a prime, I don't think any is even close to that. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to. Also, also with the also with the beer. I mean, that, <laughs> that's also something different too. Yeah, well, we've rented we've rented a space. Um, it's uh, going to be at the uh, Virginia State Fairgrounds. It's at their pavilion pavilion center. Sorry, I've had a couple drinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, brother. Yeah, man. Oh, brother. So, like, we rented their pavilion center. Uh, it's been used to house like other card tournaments, uh, Pokemon regionals, and other stuff like that. So the venue itself can house up to like three fifty or four hundred players. Um, so that's why we're running side events and the other stuff as well, because uh, we want to make it an event. Like we want it to be bigger than just one thing, uh, but with the main focus being on Dest. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. So drive down, fly out, come out. It'll be good. We'll be and there. if you're here a day early, come by the shop and play with the locals. Go to Todd's house and have a few beers. <laughs> Hell yeah, come yes. on. I thought that's what the special prize was going to be, a, night, a Friday night stay at, at your apartment playing Shh. Destiny. Wow. I don't have an apartment, man. I got five acres out in the woods. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is better than a world seat. We'll burn stuff. <laughs> Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll burn delve we'll burn fists whatever you we'll want jar jars no no don't you dare i'll i'm gonna st- I'll, I'll grab all the jar jars <laughs> uh, dude, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send you a picture of my jar jar you'll love it no, i will uh, probably not like <laughs> oh, who knows what that means <laughs> do you see do you see my discard my discard profile picture it's jar jar i don't pay attention to anything uh, that has anything to do with episode. <laughs> I did, i've got a mental block <laughs> just blocked it out of your mind completely. I mean, when, when I was when I was a kid, I had the mask of Jar Jar Binks. That explain so Halloween. much. Explain. That Dude, not your, your, parents, your parents did you wrong, Harry Flock. Yeah. <laughs> and then my mom threw it out. See, your mom's and right. I was very upset. Go work, Mrs. Flockton. But also, tried. also it was like a uh, like a stormtrooper helmet too that I would have loved as well. Oh. Quick right, side so... story. <laughs> guess what I found this past week? What's that? <laughs> yeah, like you're gonna guess. Um, I found... <laughs> <laughs> I got a Darth Vader mask signed by James Earl Jones. That was my second Damn. guess, honestly. Was it really? No. no it <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty happy. Yeah, that's pretty dope. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. Talk just had to that. hijack. Man, go ahead. Weird, weird flex, but okay, go off. <laughs> uh, but when are you gonna get a uh, um, a Jar Jar Binks helmet signed by um, Ahmed Best? Uh, Ahmed, yeah. <laughs> so, so he may be the special guest at Air Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine? that is a goddamn lie. Oh man, I, was say, oh, I would oh, man. I would die. <laughs> man, you know, did you ever watch the video where he talks about depression and like how yeah, Star it's Wars I know. Yeah, it's so like, sad. I feel bad. I take He's it a back. cool guy. I'm the You're best. You're a decent fella. You're great. Literally Todd caused it. That's what he was like, there's this guy from <laughs> Northern Virginia named Todd. <laughs> Who just he really set me off. Like it's not him. Like he's a fine fellow. Look, it's not it's you, it's character. me, okay? <laughs> Misa never listened to Knights of Ren. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank God. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to wrap up. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks for tuning in uh, for, to Golden Dice. Uh, we're glad that you made it this far. If you have two hours, 15 uh, <laughs> minutes, I don't know what any of this is salvageable and through all the Wilhelm screams. <laughs> Uh, I actually had to go to my second page in my little notebook uh, with time <laughs> Um But I want to give a shout out to uh, Game Shop of Destiny. Uh, you can go to the website, gameshopofdestiny.com. They're currently having a Black Friday sale for 25% off all singles with the discount code Black Friday. Uh, it's starting, it's going on now, but it ends December 3rd and all orders of $5 or more before shipping will receive a free Thrawn All Art Card. Uh, and Game Shop of Destiny sticker. So if you're interested to pick up singles, they do have solid prices. But of course, if you're going to Total Access Games in January, uh, you can pick up some singles there uh, as well. Yeah, right. There's there's your free plug, Todd. Uh, I'll expect ten percent. You're 10%, a good man. I'll expect thirteen percent <laughs> of the uh, the earnings to go towards me. Oh, yeah, 13? Uh, thirteen? Thirteen point six. Thirteen point six. Just just like uh, Scott's, uh, you know, one percentage. That's cutting deep. I feel like that's better than uh. Old boys win rate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. If you haven't already, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Twitch. Uh, we're streaming primes. We're hoping to do one in, up in December. But like we mentioned, we'll be doing Total Access Games uh, event as well. So go ahead and follow that for looking for more content. And as always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Solo, I'm on solo, solo. Feeling like a star, you can't stop my shine. I'm